Uh, we were downstairs in executive session. I'd like to welcome everyone to the regular meeting of the Enfield Town Council. Today is Tuesday, September 3rd, 2013. And uh, I would ask everyone in the audience to please stand for a prayer led by Councilman Mangini. Cindy Mangini, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. The American's Creed by William Tyler Page. I believe in the United States of America as a government of the people, by the people, for the people, whose just powers are derived from the consent of the governed, a democracy and a republic, a sovereign nation of many sovereign states, a perfect union, one and inseparable, established upon those principles of freedom, equality, justice, and humanity, for which American patriots sacrifice their lives and fortunes. I therefore believe it is my duty to my country to love it, to support its constitution, to obey its laws, to respect its flag, and to defend it against all enemies. May God bless America. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Cindy. And uh, may we have roll call, please. Councilman Crawley. Here. Councilman Edgar. Here. Councilman Hall. Here. Mayor Copen. Here. Councilman Kinsler. Here. Councilman Lee. Here. Councilman Manchin. Here. Deputy Mayor Nelson. Here. Councilman Stokes. Here. Councilman Arnone. Here. Councilman Bosco. Here. We have 11 members present, none are absent. For our fire evacuation announcement, I remind all the folks here in town hall that in the event that the fire alarm sounds, everyone must evacuate the building. Uh, closest exit out of council chambers would be to the rear of council chambers and out to the front of town hall. If you choose to take the side door to your right or left, we ask that you then take the back set of stairs to the back parking lot of town hall. Minutes of the preceding meetings, we have two. First would be the special meeting of August 5th, 2013. So moved. Moved by Councilman Mangini, seconded by Councilman Kensler. Any discussion? Sensing none by show of hands, all those in favor? Those opposed? Any abstentions? One abstention. And we have the regular meeting of August 5th, 2013. Moved Second. by Councilman Kensler, seconded by Councilman Mangini. Discussion? Sensing none, show of hands, all those in favor, those opposed, any abstentions, one abstention. Next item on our agenda is our special guest section. And um, we have uh, with us this evening, I'd like to introduce Trey Pierce. Trey is an Eagle Scout candidate. And uh, Trey is going to uh, update council and the town on his proposed project. Um, council have an opportunity to ask any questions um, or give comments to Trey after he makes his presentation. We're seeking uh, consensus from the council to allow Trey to move forward uh, with his Eagle Scout project. And if we give council consensus, Trey's got some paperwork that the manager will sign right after your presentation. So Trey, um, first of all, as a Boy Scout and, and working your way towards Eagle Scout, thank you for uh, the service to your troop. Uh, and to your community as well. Thank you for being here this evening. And uh, we look forward to your presentation and then uh, questions and comments from the council. So welcome. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Trey Pierce and I'm with Boy Scout Troop 818 here in Enfield. I'm here tonight to present to you my Eagle Scout project. I plan to build three ADA compliant wheelchair accessible picnic tables that I will be donating to the town of Enfield. These tables will be constructed of pressure treated lumber which will make them durable and long lasting. I will be making one 8 foot table with two 5 foot benches on opposing sides and two 4 foot square tables leaving one side bench free on each table. The town will be able to move these tables around as needed allowing the wheelchair bound residents of Enfield to participate in numerous events offered throughout the year. My goal is to have these residents be able to stay comfortable with their families and friends rather than off to the side. I will be raising the funds needed for this project by holding a benefit pig roast at the Moose Lodge on South Road later this month. Tickets will be $10 each and available soon. 
Thank you very much for allowing me the time to make this presentation. I hope you're as excited as I am and look forward to presenting the finished tables to you this fall. Very good, Trey. Thank you so much. Count, uh, comments, questions from the council. Councilman Arnone. Yeah, can we have that date again? Um, may you just swing the microphone right a little closer to your mouth so everybody can hear the date of the, the uh, fundraiser. Um, I don't have a set date. Oh, looking to be around the 28th of this month. Around the 28th of the month? Yes. If it's approved. If it is approved by. Great. Great. No, excellent. I, I think that's an awesome idea. I'm 100% behind it. Thank you. It's a good idea. Um, I'd love to see these uh, benches when they're done, too. So, 100% on that one. Great. And Thanks, make Tom. Make sure we know, too, when the fundraiser is so we can go. Thank you. Questions, comments from the council? Councilman Kensler. Uh, Dre, thank you for, for doing that. So <clears throat> if I heard you correctly, we'll be able as a town to move these around to events and things that we have to help uh, so that wheelchair accessibility, people can come enjoy and have their own picnic tables wherever an event is, whether it's on the green or in another part of town, ball yes. games, that kind of thing. Yes. Excellent, okay. Great, I'm for it. I'll see you at the pig roast. Okay. Thank you, Tom. Deputy Mayor Nelson. I cannot make the end of the month. I will be out of town. But what I will do for you is I'm willing to donate $100 on my Kelly for Debt account, and I will talk to the owner of Kelly for Debt and see if he'll match my donation for you so you can go to Kelly for Debt and get $200 worth of material for your project to help you get started. Thank you very much. All right, just contact me. I can give you my phone number after the meeting. Okay. Great. Great. Thank you, Ken. Councilman Stokes. Yeah, I just wanted to compliment what you're doing, and uh, we appreciate, uh, you know, young men like you stepping up and doing things like this. So just keep it going. But I also want to tell you that as your folks are back there videotaping you from behind, I took a couple pictures here from the front. So if you want to email me at g at gstokes at info.org uh, tomorrow, I'll, I'll send you the pictures. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Greg. Further comments from the council? So, Trey, thank you so much uh, from all of us here. Once you get the, uh, the date finalized, let us know. We've got a council meeting uh, prior to that so we can help publicize uh, the event through our councilman communications. But um, awesome project. Um, having involvement with the 4th of July celebration and getting uh, thousands of people come to a community event, there are folks that come in wheelchairs and uh, this is a great project to be able to accommodate them so they can uh, be with their families and friends on the side of the picnic table where people are seated versus uh, on the end. So it's a great idea and uh, let us know how we can support you. Uh, what Deputy Mayor Nelson has offered is, is tremendous and, and I'm sure a good many of us will, will come out uh, to your pig roast as well because that's that's a great event. Uh, <laughs> I think that's a successful fundraiser. You might be building six picnic yeah. tables. You're gonna save me a plate. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. And can we freeze some of the of the pork so that we can give it to uh, Deputy Mayor Nelson when he's back in town? I'll see what Deal? I can do. All right. <laughs> Good answer. All right, Trey. Thank you, and and to your parents and to your troop as well. Uh, congratulations, and uh, we look forward to uh, hearing about your fundraiser. And, and about your project as well. Thanks a lot. Thank you once again for your time. All right, and uh, you have council consensus, so you can get the official uh, stroke of the pen from the town manager. Good job. Thank you. I think we have a future councilman that just presented to us. That's right. <laughs> um, the, the next under, uh, item under our special guests, um, the Energy Efficiency Award recipients, there must have been a communication error. So we'll have to see if we can get in touch with, um, with these students. So today was the first day of school, so it, it may not have worked out. And, uh, but we'll see if uh, that can be rescheduled for our second meeting in September. And then under special guests, um, this is just a reading of the proclamation. We don't have a representative here from the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, 
but they did request a proclamation recognizing the month of September as Leukemia, Lymphoma, and Melanoma Awareness Month, and the proclamation reads as follows. Whereas blood cancers currently afflict more than 1,012,533 people in the United States, with an estimated 140,000 new cases diagnosed each year. And whereas leukemia, lymphoma, and melanoma will kill an estimated 53,010 people in the United States this year. And whereas a leukemia and lymphoma society, through voluntary contributions, is dedicated to finding cures for these diseases through research efforts and the support of those that suffer from them. And whereas the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society maintains an office in Wilton and Meriden to support patients with these diseases and their family members in the state of Connecticut. And whereas the town of Enfield is similarly committed to the eradication of these diseases and supports the treatment of its citizens that suffer from them. And whereas the town of Enfield encourages private efforts to enhance research funding and education programs that address these diseases. Now, therefore, I, Scott Copen, Mayor of the Town of Enfield, on behalf of the Town Council, the Town Administration, and the entire community, join with the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society in designating the month of September 2013 as Leukemia, Lymphoma, and Melanoma Awareness Month. Signed today, September 3rd, 2013. And uh, we'll have this posted on, on the town's website. And uh, hopefully this raises some awareness towards the efforts uh, of the LLS. Okay. Next item on the agenda is public communications and petitions. If there's anyone in the audience wishing to address the council, I ask you to please raise your hand. I'll call on you, come forward to the center table, state your name and address for the record. Please keep your comments to no more than five minutes. I do uh, need to time you, so at about 4.30, I will politely um, interrupt and ask you to please wrap up your comments. Um, if need be, there's, there's always the opportunity for a second round, and we ask that you please refrain from the use of personalities. Is there anyone in the audience wishing to address the council? Mr. Moriarty. Hello, I'm Steve Moriarty from 24 Cedar Drive here in wonderful Enfield, Connecticut. I have three things I'd like to bring up, uh, actually four. Uh, uh, one of them is uh, the bike rack that was in the back is no longer there. I'm sure somebody just moved it to uh, use it for some other, uh, some other uh, events in town, but uh, I'm sure it'll show up again. Uh, number two is uh, the trees that are in front here uh, keep on coming very close. They're uh, low hanging uh, on the sidewalk and they need to be trimmed up or something. Uh, person, people with vision problems such as myself uh, always getting hit in the head with those things. Uh, another thing is uh, regarding the uh, sewer usage fee, uh, I brought up uh, uh, something is kind of minor, but it's something that should be addressed is the uh, use of gray water or uh, putting in a gray water system into your house. Uh, that would reduce the need or excuse me, reduce your uh, use of uh, the sewers. Uh, and a simple system can reduce your use by 50%, just getting rid of uh, shower water and laundry water. Uh, using earth-friendly products uh, should not harm the environment by just dumping it out onto your lawn. Currently, that is not up to code with the state of Connecticut, uh, their health department, although I am talking with them about uh, addressing this as we go into uh, the sewer usage fee. It would be nice if the town was on board with this conservation effort uh, to help back up uh, you know, something that we, we would all benefit from. Uh, so we need to address before anything is finalized the gray water systems. It's something that's environmentally friendly. It's something the town benefits from. Uh, I think it's something we should all consider. 
and I can put one in my house for less than fifty dollars. And the payback, if if I got a fifty percent credit on my sewer usage fee, the payback for me would be about two and a half years, money well spent. Uh, the last thing I have is uh, the National Solar Tour will be held on the 5th of October. I will be hosting one of the sites in town. I believe the Clean Energy Committee has a few other things going. I just want to let you know, save the date. Come on out and uh, enjoy the, the sun. Hopefully it will not be raining this time, as it has many times in the past. Uh, it's, it's something interesting. There's a, a lot of things to see if you haven't seen them yet. And uh, I hope you enjoy it, and we'll be letting you know more information about it coming up. Thank you very much. Thank you, Steve. Public communications, Mr. Cross. Jeffrey Cross, 1116 Enfield Street. At last meeting, I came here to discuss the situation regarding the concerned taxpayers of the Thompsonville Fire District and their complaint against the Board of Commissioners for the Thompsonville Fire District. We went to court last Friday. It is now in the judge's hands. A decision has yet to be made. The final plaintiff brief is due on September 10th. The defendant's final brief is due on September 13th, which is a Friday. We would expect a decision to be made by September 20th, a week later. At this point, as I stated, it's in the judge's hands. Now we feel, we, the concerned taxpayers and the additional uh, defendants, feel confident that we will prevail in our, in our hearing, in our case. We also feel that if we win and Mr. Alimo can speak for himself that they would appeal. I know for a fact if we lose, we will appeal. So this will continue and it will be expedited to the Connecticut Supreme Court since this is a political issue. So. Be that as it may, I'm asking that this town council again delay any decision regarding the moving and allowing of the dirt to be stored on town property. In addition, I think it is very important that the town council for the town of Enfield as well as the Board of Commissioners, make public any agreements that have been made between the town and the Commission regarding the value of clean fill. Dirt is just not dirt. It has value. I have worked in several companies in the construction area. Clean fill can go as much as $125 a yard. The amount of dirt that is possibly being removed from the area of the firehouse could be thousands of yards. Now I am not sure, I have not seen the plans for the um, demolition of the Higgins building. I am not sure, I have not seen and poured over the plans for the new firehouse. 
but it's been, I have been led to believe that several feet of dirt may be removed from the new property. Several feet on the size of that property is a lot of dirt. There is value in that clean fill. And I want to make sure that the taxpayers of the Thompsonville Fire District are fairly reimbursed if we are giving the dirt to the town that is unacceptable. So I think that any plans, any deals, any agreements between the town and the Thompsonville Fire District need to be made public so we know exactly where the town stands and where the district stands. Um, so once again, I'm asking you to delay any decisions regarding the dirt and then I'm also asking that any decisions or any agreements between the the town and the district be made public. And if they have been, point me to the right direction and I'll obviously check it out. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. What's your thing? Public communications. Anyone else for public communications? Mr. T. Cass. Bob T. Katz, 5 Anfield Terrace. I'm, <clears throat> I'm going to talk about the so-called sewer fee, and some people call the sewer tax. It, this seems to be an issue with just about every town in Connecticut and especially up in Massachusetts. Uh, Holyoke uh, Town City Council is going to meet tonight to discuss this issue. They have made, I, I, towns have different issues some some towns own the water company some towns don't but they're all the same issues and i'm just going to read you a couple excerpts Con the uh, city councilors will consider seeking state legislation this is massachusetts would let holyoke waterworks and water service to customers who have failed to pay sewer fees as leverage to force delinquents to pay what they owe but there's a state law that says you can't do that uh, officials are considering uh, steps to address the projected $890,000 deficit. And a lot of these towns are having major deficits over a sewer fee, the towns that have the sewer fee. Um, the current sewer rate in Holyoke is five, about $5.40 per 1,000 gallons. And the average in Holyoke is 90,000 gallons a year, which uh, comes out to about $486 a year. But what they want to do is raise the fee to $6. So the people that are paying the fee are going to have to make up for the delinquents that aren't paying the fee, which is, to me, is totally ludicrous. Why should somebody that's paying the fee have to make up for the delinquents that aren't paying the fee? Under your present system, you have a way of collect collecting the money and paying. Uh, when you go to a sewer fee, people don't want to pay, you're stuck. Um, the committee that sets the fees are called the Ordinance Committee in Holyoke, and Chairman Rebecca Lissy said the council has avoided addressing sewer fund revenue problems, a politicized issue for years. And unpalatable as it is, it's an election year. We need to be addressing the problem at the roots. So it's, it's, all, it's all political. I think this sewer fee issue ought to be avoided, continue with, this, with the same system. Everybody pays. Uh, apparently, Holyoke is losing more money than they would get in grants from the federal government or the state government. So you're, you're really not making any headway here. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Public Communications, Jack. Jack Sheridan, 7 Buchanan Road. Um, Bob, Bob reminded me of the sewer tax thing. Uh, from our community conversation meeting the other night, I went on the website and it still has the old calculation there, so I guess that hasn't been changed. 
the, the way to calculate it's at a fifty dollar minimum fee and okay so so the problem I have and one of the things I think that was suggested that night I think Ken you had suggested um, the fact that when it's a sewer usage fee it's not collectible on these foreclosures and right now there's a lot of them over 120 and if it was a tax it is collectible at the sale of the property and I don't know how that works exactly but it seems to me we're opening ourselves up for another maybe what we need to do is like Bob said keep it as a tax I don't know how if, if, if other communities are having trouble collecting this fee um, I remember years ago when the fire departments collected their own fire tax and half the people weren't paying it and that's why it, it came under the town to collect because it was advantageous people were saying well I'm not going to pay the fire tax because it's not mandatory I don't have to pay it if I have fire insurance I guess I don't know what the <laughs> what the thought process was but I'm just saying that this sewer use fee still doesn't set well with most people that I've been in contact with. And, and the other thing is, have the schools or have you addressed the excessive use of water for the schools, as was pointed out years back? Um, because they're then going to have to budget or line item a budget for that use tax also. And it's going to be a huge amount of money. And the last thing we want to do is have them come back and say they want more money for the sewer use tax fee in their school in their school tax so uh, and I'm sure they will uh, so let's fix the excessive water problem and do you know and you can answer that but has anybody has any of the schools addressed that excessive use by putting low flow or no flow instruments in there to see because that that's low-hanging fruit everybody knows about it and we should try to curtail that use you know if for no other reason we're running out of water in this country you know water is a problem and um, I I really I really think that uh, charging an extra amount of money for what we use in the sewer thing and like I said before we, the us who have been here a few years, uh, we paid for the pipe, and now you want us to pay for an additional charge. Uh, and then, if I'm not mistaken, we're going to come ask for 30 some odd million dollars more for s roofs for the schools and things in a, in a bond issue. So that's on top of all these other increases. I, I just think you, you're pushing the envelope. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. Public communications. Anyone else? Thank you very much. Uh, next item on the agenda is uh, Councilman Communications and Petitions. Councilman Communications. Councilman Mangini. Just a couple of um, issues. Um, now that the kids have returned to school, I just want to uh, remind everyone to please be careful of the school buses and to uh, be extra careful uh, with small children, especially running. Um, a little more uh, freely, you know, between the buses and the cars, and let's just watch our speed as we're traveling, you know, with the kids going to school. The other <clears throat> item I just want to touch briefly on, council has received the Enfield Adult Daycare Center um, brochures and information. Just want to make the public aware <clears throat> that we have a wonderful adult daycare uh, facility here in Enfield. Um, we have uh, professional nurses, we have professional staff on site uh, to help administer with medications, um, take care of uh, physical needs of our um, senior uh, residents. But it also provides a wonderful opportunity for um, older um, Enfield um, you know, citizens to enjoy some social time. They have different um, activities that um, they put on for the people, and it's a safe haven for um, our, you know, uh, older grandparents and parents um, to have some fun, you know, with arts and crafts, field trips. But I just <coughs> want to bring everyone's attention uh, to the fact that we do have this wonderful facility, and it is right here in Enfield on Beach Road. So I just wanted to bring that forward. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Cindy. Councilman Kenzer. 
not to piggyback on um, Councilman Mangini's adult daycare center, but on the opposite side of the spectrum, um, I wanted to thank all the staff, uh, buildings and grounds, and everyone else involved in uh, the moving of the adult, I mean the child development center <clears throat> from its former location over to Alcorn. Uh, I've been hearing reports that uh, things went very, very smoothly, and uh, the parents and the kids are really happy. So. Uh, hats off to the work. Um, secondly, the dog park, uh, Enfield Dog Park, still looking for volunteers. Um, if you go to their Facebook page, Enfield Dog Park, um, please put a note on there, volunteer, help them out. Um, they're doing great work over there. And um, that's all I have. Thank you, Tom. Councilman Lee. Yes, uh, Scott, through, through you to, to Matt, um, there's been a, a couple conversations online, and I think they may have started in, in C-Click Fix um, that I want to ask you about or perhaps meet on. Um, several years ago, there were a, a series of, of discussions around traffic calming and, and moving trucks to the right roads that were coming off of Taylor Road. Maybe even before you were here, Matt, um, there was um, the development over the line in Long Meadow was just coming online, and there was a lot of truck traffic hitting Taylor and speed concerns. Lately, there's been a lot of those trucks making their way to North Street and coming right through um, the intersection of North and Elm. And some folks have um, have been talking about it online. Um, I recalled back a few years ago one of the solutions was to work with the um, state of Connecticut to um, install some signage that kind of showed the best route back to 91. Um, and I'm wondering if we can revisit that with CONDOT and find out if that's still something that's possible. Um, I mean, I know that we, one of the things that we were talking about in the, in the forum was that there is industrial use on North Street. Um, so you're not going to move that away, but getting the trucks that are just passing through uh, to use the roads that we'd prefer, which I would imagine would be Shaker or Moody, would be um, useful. So if we can follow up on that. Um, that's it for now. Thank you. Thanks, Bill. Councilman Bosco? I just want to let everyone know that uh, Next weekend, the 12th, the 13th, 14th, and 15th, a four-town fair, and it's our anniversary, and love to see anyone there. We can get down there and uh, have a good time. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Councilman Arnone. Thanks. Uh, over the uh, Labor Day weekend, we held a pirate fair. Kids first put on a pirate fair in the town, uh, the town green. I want to uh, thank the council for their support, also the town manager, and uh, through him, the various departments and the that help out with that event and uh, of course the residents for their support even in the rain uh, we uh, despite the rain we had a very successful fair we're looking forward to doing it again uh, again next year and if you could run that picture please um, I just want to also thank Scott uh, for coming <laughs> and being such a, a good sport because I always put him on the spot and uh, He's in the this one particular not picture so. he was uh, he was uh, in, in uh, uh, took the pi he's a part of a, a pirate now the pirate council and that's pirate Arr. council there and uh, again for representing the council so well and and thank you for showing up and uh, going through that uh, induction that ceremony, induction ceremony. <laughs> <laughs> that's all i have thank you thank you tom <laughs> councilman edgar yes i have two items to the chair to the manager i've brought them both up before and they just seem to be getting band-aid fixes the first one is the parking lot that the town owns across from Coronas. It needs to repay, be repaved and, and redone before somebody falls and really gets hurt and we end up in litigation. It's worse than it ever was and they just blessed it last time. And the other one is goes along with what Steve had to say. The trees and so forth from the Grays Club west to the underpass you can't walk on a sidewalk without be getting hit by the trees. That was done before, over a year ago, and it's just as bad, if not worse, this time. And we need to do something on both of those areas. Thank you, Red. 
Councilman Stokes. I just want to, uh, quickly wanted to mention that I agree about the adult uh, day center. We had the meeting the other night, brainstorming, and uh, enjoyed being there with Councilman Mangini and uh, Mayor uh, Copen. So we enjoyed that. I also want to mention that just a couple weeks ago on a Saturday, uh, I want to compliment uh, Tim and Jamie Norris, who headed up a cleanup on the Scanic River. And some of us were there, Bill and Leo and I were there, and spent uh, a few hours uh, going through the uh, trails there and picking up trash. And actually, I learned a lot of history. I didn't know a lot of stuff was back there, the old mill, the things that are back there. But uh, I know my wife, I think, in about an hour and a half, had four to five big giant bags full. Bill came carrying a 55-gallon drum off, out of the water, and I thought that was quite interesting. So, But uh, we had a, a good time doing the good work there, and I just want to compliment uh, Tim and Jamie uh, Norris for their leadership in that. So, Thank you, Greg. Yeah. Councilman Hall. Um, through the mayor to uh, the town manager, um, maybe to the town attorney, um, the question I have is to Mr. Cross's question. Um, do we have some sort of agreement that we can supply him with that we have with the fire uh, district for the uh, clean fill? And if, if we don't have any agreement, that, that's fine just to answer his question. Um, and the other question goes to, I guess it's been brought up to me, who will we be dealing with for the legal entity for North Thompsonville? Do we do we know? North Thompsonville. I'm sorry, <laughs> Thompsonville. Um, do we know who legally we're supposed to be dealing with? Seeing that there's only two commissioners now, I guess is my question. Probably f to Kevin. Sure. Um, just because I I know when we're involved in the contracts, it was a different situation. So my question goes to, do we know who legally we should be dealing with? Sure. So you can answer that under under your communications, Kevin. Um, the bike rack, Matt, do we know what happened to the bike rack? <laughs> no, okay. Maybe we can find it. <laughs> um, and then um, Greg, Greg mentioned a few, uh, a few weeks ago there were a couple events. Port Chester on Weymouth Road had a wonderful Veterans Appreciation Day, which was amazing. I don't, I don't know if anybody got there, but it was uh, it was a really nice event, and I want to I want to thank Lori for kind of bringing that to us, and it was it was well attended. Um, I was there, and I don't know if, if you got over or not, but Lori did an awesome job pulling it together, like she always does. So thanks thanks to her for that, and um, I think that's it. Thanks, Carol. Deputy Mayor Nelson. <clears throat> Um, I've received two texts since Mr. Cross has come up and talked. And if we could, after the meeting, find out who's paying 125 a yard for Phil, because there's two construction companies in Enfield <laughs> that would love to get more than $10 a yard for Phil. A big part of Phil is in the trucking. And I would think that with the situation that's going on with the fire department that this council should stay out of, the best place for the Phil that I believe they can remove would be right next door, just in case it has to go back. They could work a deal with the town. They use our property. It sits there because Higgins isn't down. And if they do lose and the fill has to go back on site, it's here to put back. But if they choose to sell it, well, the taxpayers are paying to haul it away and they're going to pay to buy the same fill back. And according to Mr. Cross's number, I would assume they'd try to get $125 a yard to sell it back to us. So um, I, I just... I don't understand where they're going. I would be more than happy to make a deal with the fire department that the fill could sit on our property until this is settled, because if I'm correct, they do have the go-ahead to start digging from the court. But uh, we'll discuss that farther when it comes up on the agenda. Oh, no. and I'd like to make a motion and suspend the rules and move item D to miscellaneous and proceed to vote. Second. Motion by Deputy Mayor Nelson, seconded by Councilman Mangini. Any discussion? Sense. Oh, so all those in favor of moving the item to miscellaneous by a show of hands. Those opposed? Any abstentions? Did, did Councilman Edgar, did you have a question? No, I want to speak. Okay. 
So motion passes. Anything else, Ken? I've just never seen it so small. It just I know. It, it missed moved. my eyes. <laughs> right. Thank you. Thanks, Ken. Uh, Councilman Edgar. Yes, this bothered me. I was going to bring it up later on, but since Councilman Hall brought it up now, uh, in the document dated June 18, 2013, from Pacheco Ross and Architects, it's an addendum to the bidding documents. And in sec item C-4, section G, it says, the town has indicated that the contractor will be allowed to stage on portions of the adjacent town property near the skate park. Don't know where it come from, but I know it's on the addendum. I won't give it to you. Maybe I'd be glad to show it to you. Now, the other thing, and I have no question on this, the town is going to waive all bidding fees on that, and we've done it for other fire departments in the past, so I think it's only right that we do. But if you go further, and you go into Section 1, 2300 alternates, it says the town of Enfield may request to receive unused excavation materials to fill in the adjacent Higgins School void after it's Demolition. It says may request. Provide a credit to do the following instead of removing from the property as per another section. All excavation soils and fill materials which are required to be removed per the contract document shall be placed on the adjacent town owned property in a location coordinated to the town of Enfield. General contractor shall be responsible for implementing erosion control measures and temporary stabilization of soil piles on town property until anticipated use by the town in the fall. Now, you go a little further, and I'm not good at reading these like you are, Ken, but they have an alternate to this, and it says excess subsoil excavation placement, and it asks for a, a bid on the lump sum cost for excess subsoil excavation plant. Now, I take that means that they want a price if they had to remove it from the area and not keep it there. I'm not sure. You have to correct me on that. I'm not sure how to read that. But I was going to talk about this later on, but I don't know where that come from, Carol. Don't know who did it, but it is in here. And the other item that I'd like to just touch on briefly, uh, we were told that the uh, money that went, or the land that went to the fire department was not part of the Higgins. Now we gave school court to them and everything east of school court was Higgins property and we are on the Higgins property and we sold it. It's too late now, but I'd just like to make that point. Thank you, Red. And if, if you could share those documents with the manager so that we could all um, see the points that you raised, that would be great. He can read them or he can copy them, but I'm not giving them up. I understood. <laughs> Any other councilman communications? Uh, I've got a couple items. First, um, I want to thank all the folks that came out to our quarterly uh, Q&A session back on uh, Monday, August 26th. It was the uh, best attended uh, session that we've had um, since uh, the five plus years that we've been holding them. A lot of great uh, discussion back and forth as well. So appreciate everyone coming out and spending almost three hours with us at, uh, at Nathan Hale. Um, second, um, I had the opportunity to speak at the Enfield Public Schools convocation uh, last Tuesday, a week ago. It's the opening session of, uh, with all the um, faculty members of, of Enfield Public Schools, teachers, administrators, staff, um, also staff from the town of Enfield that support uh, Enfield Public Schools were, uh, were in attendance as well. And uh, had a, um, a great talk um, from a, a representative, the VP of Marketing from LEGO about the uh, different initiatives that LEGO is is undertaking within our in our public school uh, system. So 
also wanted to uh, to thank Lego for their uh, dedication to uh, not only to Enfield Public Schools but to a lot of the initiatives that we're uh, holding here in town to improve the um, the linkages between business uh, education and the town. On th uh, third item, uh, Councilman Stokes and Councilman Mangini mentioned the Adult Day Center Hackathon that we had uh, last week on Thursday the 29th. Uh, we had uh, a good um, representation of service providers, residents, staff, and clients uh, of, the, uh, of the Adult Day Center. Uh, coming up, uh, hopefully with a new name um, based on, on the process as well. And uh, it's just a, a very educational evening to, to spend learning about the day center and, and what the thoughts are um, from other folks that are coming uh, from outside and, and viewing uh, the work that happens at the adult day center. Um, I received an email from Lori Gates and she asked for me to help promote uh, the Connecticut 9-11 Memorial uh, the memorial honors the 65 Connecticut residents who uh, died in the terror attacks on, on September 11th. And um, this memorial comes to Enfield and it's, uh, it's put right out in front of Town Hall around the fountain patio area. It consists of uh, flags and the biographies of the 65 Connecticut residents um, who died on, on September 11th. And um, the memorial will be going up on September 6th, and it will be up through uh, September 13th. And so if you have a chance, uh, come out to Town Hall and, and to the front area and see the 9-11 um, memorial that honors uh, the Connecticut victims of 9-11. Joey, um, thanks for mentioning the Four Town Fair and always a, a great a kickoff to, to the fall. You mentioned That's it's. I know. <laughs> uh, you mentioned it's the anniversary, and it is 175. the 175th anniversary of the Four Town Fair. I know you're heavily invested um, as one of the directors uh, of the Four Town Fair. So uh, good luck uh, this coming week and weekend, and. Um, Pray for good weather. I think so, we took it all this time. yeah, that's right. Drain a sponge. Another uh, good event um, on is our family day on the green, and I know we couldn't work this year to try to avoid the conflict, um, but our family day on the green is Sunday, uh, September fifteenth as well. I believe it starts at eleven and runs uh, through the afternoon, 11 to 4, 11 to 5. Don't quote me on the hours. Um, but it's uh, an event here on the town green for, for uh, kids and their families. On um, Councilman Arnone, want to congratulate you and all your, your volunteers for the Enfield Pirate Fair. Um, well done. And uh, you had uh, great attendance um, despite uh, the weather and uh, was here on Saturday and, and drove by a couple times on Sunday. And uh, just uh, as one volunteer to another, um, good job and I, I feel your pain. Yeah. Uh, whether it's rain or 100 plus degree temperatures and humidity, um, but that's what happens with outdoor festivals and Four Town Fair's classic example. Um, but there are those good years that uh, <laughs> that you get a lot, you get nice weather and, and great record crowd. So, but congratulations to you and, and everyone involved with Kids First and the Pirate Fair. And then my last item is um, just for people who came to our last council meeting and ha we had the public hearings on the sewer usage fee. Uh, the town manager has collected all the all the questions that were either uh, given here in during public comment during the public hearing any that had been uh, received via email uh, the questions and the answers are posted on the town's website and then the process will begin to to review and, and start to to come up with recommended changes uh, to then eventually hold another public hearing um, uh, in in more of an interactive uh, community conversation type of setting so that's um, that's what I had, and um, Carol and, and Red talked about um, 
Mr. Cross's questions on, on Thompsonville Fire. Uh, Matt, if you know, uh, to answer Jack's questions on um, ex excessive flow uh, or water use within the schools, have we started to do what we've done here in town hall by um, having the, the no flush um, toilets, um, men's urinals, I'm assuming is the only one that's no flush, I would hope. Uh, <laughs> but, um, you know, are there initiatives that, that we're undertaking at the school system as well to, to cut down on, on, the, uh, on the water usage? Um, and that's all that I have. Anyone else, anything else? Ken. Just along with what Mayor Copen had said, if we could get the dollar amount that it costs for the cartridges for the ur urinals that are now waterless so we can make a real comparison what it's costing to do it with no water versus with water, because that's really the fair number we need. Yeah. I heard those cartridges are pretty expensive. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Uh, town Manager's Report and Communications. Matt. And since there was uh, a lot of discussion about the Enfield Adult Day Center, we have Pam and Paula here to make a brief, uh, to give a brief update on where we stand as promised uh, to council. So, Paul, Pam, please come forward. Good evening. I'm Paula Vysokowskis. I'm the director of the Adult Day Center, and this is Pam Brown, the director of social services. We wanted to uh, give you an update on uh, some of the different marketing uh, tools that we've developed uh, since uh, the spring. And we also want to thank the town council for your generous support of the Adult Day Center. And uh, I'm going to, Paul is going to be our uh, primary um, speaker tonight. But I need to log in. We're going to start with our uh, newest commercial that we have out on Facebook and also on our website and ETV. Can we not make it large? Our parents took good care of us. Now that they're old, it's our turn to take care of them. It's a big responsibility and we all could use some help. The Enfield Adult Day Center is here for you. There's a family of trained volunteers and registered nurses at the center waiting to help. <coughs> the Enfield Adult Day Center provides you with peace of mind. It's a safe environment with trained and caring people to help. There's stimulating activities every day. There's garden, field trips, entertainment, and use of computers. Your loved ones are cared for by attentive volunteers and registered nurses one staff person for each seven people at the center. Visit the Adult Day Center website at www.enfield-ct.gov. Learn about our caregiver support group and sign up for the Adult Day Center email list. The Enfield Adult Day Center is a home away from home. You'll be very pleased to learn about this valuable service. <laughs> okay, so that was our newest commercial. 
you might have recognized the voice in the background or um, no. was Ray Warren. So we're very grateful to Ray to come back to, to do the voice, oh, voice for I didn't us. Even know who yeah. was. <laughs> 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 All right, so uh, we are located at 1A Beach Road, and we are open Monday through Friday, 8 to 4. We are a medical model program. There are two different types of day centers in the state of Connecticut. One is a medical model, one is a social model. A medical model uh, means that we can administer medication, we have a registered nurse on site that can do the following pacemaker checks, physical, occupational, and speech therapy is offered on an outpatient basis. We offer showers and personal care, podiatry services, counseling, support groups, and guidance, and we can also manage oxygen and other respiratory treatments in the center. Services we provide are hot meals and snacks, registered nurse, certified nurses aides, and social worker on site, a therapeutic recreation director who coordinates an enriching, enriching recreation program. Transportation is offered by the Enfield Dial-A-Ride for Enfield residents, and other towns that transport with their Dial-A-Ride are Suffield, Summers, and East Windsor. Daily activities include exercise, entertainment, computer use, gardening. We also have a hairdresser that comes weekly and a foot care nurse that comes monthly. And we also do go on trips at least twice a month. This is just some of our clients enjoying their day. We get flower donations and so they take the flowers and they make some nice bouquets and they bring them home. Our uh, budget for the fiscal year 2013-14 is $439,262. Our average daily attendance needs to be 23.5 to be self-sufficient. Our average daily attendance for July and August 2013 are 19.27 and 21.23 respectively. The cost of attendance. We currently charge $71 a day we do have a sliding fee based on a client's income that we offer to Enfield residents. As you can see, the average cost comparison as compared to a home health care agency, which can be upwards of, as $161 a day for the services you see listed, uh, homemaker, registered nurse, Meals on Wheels, and a CNA. A nursing home can cost up to $348 a day. 123,888 per year, and assisted living, 3,550 3, per month, 42,600 per year. So for the value of the money that, um, uh, what it costs at, at the day center, um, it's certainly a lot cheaper to try to keep the person safely at home. This graph shows, uh, that we've been tracking since 2007, um, our day, our attendance by year average. As you can see, 2012-13, there was quite a dip. We're starting to come back up now. Um, so 2014, it represents just July and August that you're seeing for that increase right there. Those are some of our, um, not our, <coughs> Uh, entertainment that came in for family night one year. This is a display of the client's artwork that we show uh, every year at the legislative office building for the month of September. We, I just put um, our display up uh, for this year. So this is actually last year's that you're seeing. Uh, this is our annual pet show. As you can see, she's uh, enjoying a little gerbil there and some nice cows that also come every year. They're with um, uh, Powder, Powder Hill, Powder Hill, I think it is. Mary Morris, yeah. Our current marketing plan. Uh, we have started an advisory board that we're going to meet quarterly. 
we post in church bulletins. Um, we ask uh, them to put it in, and, and uh, a lot have uh, for free. And we're also in the Senior Center newsletter. We have participated in, in the Enfield July 4th Parade. This is our 20th anniversary coming up in October, and we are going to have a celebration on October 24th, in which everyone will be invited. We had a hackathon last week. Uh, we put, we're planning on putting advertisement on back of the dial -a ride bus, and we have the email distribution listserv. We've updated our website, the new video clip that you just saw, which is on Facebook, websites, and our website and ETV. We are doing a press release at least two times a week to newspapers, and they've been pretty good about getting uh, what we send them in. Uh, we're posting on Facebook at least two times per week. We have links back and forth to website and Facebook. And we created the new poster, which I, I put on your desk, um, that we're also going to uh, dispense to businesses, social service agencies, and medical professionals. Uh, I'm the um, current president of the Connecticut Association of Adult Daycare. And it, we also have a website on, uh, which is the leading age, that's the agency that we are housed in. And people can go on that website and, or call and find out which ADCs are uh, in their area. We are planning to do a biannual newsletter to be distributed to doctor's offices, senior centers, etc. cetera. Uh, patch blog and radio PSAs. For uh, events and programming, we do bingo with Mark Twain Congregate Living Residents, the pet show we just had, the antique classic car show is coming up um, the end of September. We're going to have a family night the week of um, the Adult Day Center week, volunteer appreciation awards banquet we have, Veterans Day celebration. We have fourth graders come over uh, as reading buddies, and children from the Child Development Center also come. That's one of the classic cars that was at our last year's show. That's another one. We also have for fundraising vegetable and flower plant sale every year, wreath and poinsettia plant and craft sale, and a Yankee candle sale. Here's our bowling when we go to Shaker Bowl. This was at Stratton Brook Park in Simsbury. We had a picnic and they put on a nice little uh, display for us. And Christmas is coming. That's it. Any questions? Thank you for the presentation. Deputy Mayor Nelson. The first thing I would have to say is I love the commercial, mm -hmm. and I don't know about the rest of the council, but I'd like to see it on ETV quite often. Um, I, I appreciate you going the extra mile to try to get your attendance back up. Uh, we kind of gave a clear message this year, we'll help any way we can, and I think by putting it on ETV would be the first step on our part to help get the message out, and I think you guys are doing a great job, and any way we can support you, so if the rest of the council will agree, Let's get it up on ETV tomorrow. Thank you. Councilman Hall. Great, great effort on the marketing piece. I know that that was a big discussion for budget this year, and we just felt that you weren't getting your message out. And it looks like you've really, you've gone way beyond on the message end of it. And I think that's that shows in your numbers from when, where you were at budget time. So I'm glad to see your census is up and it seems to be already working for you. So good work and keep it up. Thanks. Councilman Arnone. Yes, a very important affordable service. I'm, I'm glad we have it for our residents. We want to help, like Ken says, anything we can do to make sure this continues. And I'd love to see that. Those numbers are already raising, and that's just everything I wanted to see. Um, and sometimes we got to help, too, monetarily to keep it going. And, and I hope that's, you know, in the case uh, um, for this year, but I hope in the future we can get it right back up where it was. And excellent marketing campaigns. I think that's what's really going to turn the corner on this. I think it's such a great service. Once people really see it, 
they're going to fall in love with it and make sure their their parents and elderly go there. So great job, thank you, and uh, got my support 100% on ETV too. Let's let's get that rolling. Thank you, Councilman Crowley. Uh, great, great job, guys. Um, I'll tell you, I know some families that use the service, and they're just ecstatic about it. You do fantastic work out there. They couldn't be happier. They're very confident in dropping their, their parents off there and uh, speak very highly of what the work that you do. Um, and again, uh, I'd like to know, uh, I think maybe we found Ray Warren's new job. Uh, <laughs> we know why he left us now. <laughs> but great job. Thank you. Councilman Kensler. Uh, yeah, one thing I wanted to add, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm sort of in an ancillary business. From what I understand, once somebody goes in a nursing home mm -hmm. or they have assisted living, mm -hmm. it, it's pretty much a downward spiral in terms of their mobility, their mental health, and it's very hard for them to go into a facility mm -hmm. and come back out. Mm -hmm. Whereas what you're doing is prolonging life and helping people to remain functional for a much longer period of time uh, than if they just had somebody come in from, you know, home health care and, and that type of thing and relied solely on those type of programs. So your your program really, above and beyond the fun part, the, the good part, really preserves life mm -hmm. for a lot of people longer than it would if they did not have that service. If you, I would venture to say if you could do a survey for towns that don't offer that program yeah. against towns that do, mm -hmm. that the quality of life is much better for the towns that do. So my hat's off to you for that. That's the, that's the fringe benefit for what you do, and we appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Anyone else? Then thank you very much for the presentation. Keep up the great work. Keep giving us updates. Uh, love to see the uh, the upward number in, in the chart mm -hmm. and would be interested to see how that lasts through uh, the coming months as we head into the holidays. So, And there's always an open invitation to all of you. If you just want to stop in any time to see what goes on, please just come, come on over any time. Thank great. you. We have consensus. I think, is it already on ETB? Yes. Yeah, because it, yeah, cause it was filmed by ETB. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It is. I don't know how often, Ken, but I. I <laughs> so, Matt, you can talk to Henry to see if we can get it into a, a, a more consistent loop. It, it's supposed to be. I just don't know what the frequency is. Thank you. Yep. Right. Tom? Uh, we may have already touched on it in the past. I think we talked about it a little in budget negotiations. Was there ever a discussion about possibly doing a, a community service piece that was a, like, like a, a visit, a tour on ETV as opposed to the shorter commercial, like a longer? Well, there, there is a longer video, and I don't know if that's still posted on the website as well. Yes, there yes. is a longer video. No, on ETV, still. though. Where we would, you know, to promote it where somebody could say at 7 o'clock tonight, I can sit down with my mother and watch the, the show about, you know, and maybe it's on once a month or something where somebody would know to go to look at the show and it would really get in depth, much sure. like her presentation did. Yep. We can, we can talk about that. Okay, uh, Councilman Stokes. I, I just want to mention about the commercial. I was just wondering. I, I know probably the most high traffic time for people to watch ETV is before uh, council meetings and board ed meetings. And I don't, re I don't, of course, I don't. I'm not home to watch this. I'm here when we do ours. But I, on board ed meetings, I don't always remember having commercials before they go into the show. So, uh, so I'm wondering if if we can target maybe to have these kind of commercials run for five minutes because folks usually turn over the channel, begin watching because this is probably the highest rating times before our meetings in Board of Ed. Why, we don't know, but <laughs> but, uh, but I'm just thinking, seriously, folks flip over the TV, get ready for a council meeting, be good not just to have... Well, pop planning and yeah, zoning, too. Yeah, pl yeah planning and zoning, too. So um, just to some advice in marketing, might target those five-minute spots before major meetings. So. Let's recess yeah. for five minutes. Yeah, and, and we can recess during the meeting and say, we'll be right back <laughs> after this. Sure. Never Important mind. Important announcement. Right. <laughs> Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you very much. Thank you. Matt? Uh, going over some of the questions uh, regarding the, uh, the dirt from the Thompsonville Fire Station, uh, they're estimating about 4,600 yards is going to be what's going to be produced there. 
and that is very close to what fill that we would need for the uh, the remnant hole from the Higgins. Um, in terms of any agreement, there is no written agreement. Uh, they approached to us. Um, I don't remember exactly how, when, or where, but they said we have this. It's going to be cheaper for us to to give it to you than to haul it off the site. Um, you know, related to their uh, RFP. You know, obviously we don't have any say over what they produce in terms of what an RFP or is. Um, so I can't speak to what they put in there. Um, as councils where we did have conversations with them about the dirt so I can see where they're hedging their bets whether we accept it or not because at the point in time we really weren't sure if we were going to accept it because um, this goes back to the timing on on the demolition and everything um, but everything else again there may have been conversation about uh, what they were going to need in terms of uh, lay down area and staging but you know, staff doesn't have the authority to grant that, only council does. So again, I'm assuming they're probably making plans for what they think is going to happen because they need to get their document out to bid. Um, but again, ultimately council makes that final decision whether land would be licensed to them for that, that short-term use or not. Uh, so I think hopefully that addresses all the questions that came up about uh, agreements, the amount of uh, dirt that's going to be done. Um, and, and I would request that, that, and I do have a little bit of an update based upon my conversation right before uh, the meeting with uh, the attorney representing uh, Thompson Fire District in terms of you know, what their viewpoint is in terms of what they're, they're allowed to do and what they're going to be doing. Uh, related to uh, the question that came up about delinquent sewer bills, if we go to a, a usage fee rather than the tax, um, I think this has been addressed in the past, and, and I know one of the questions that was asked actually by a council member uh, related to our ability to uh, put that on as a lien for taxes, and where does that stand in terms of position? Is it the same position that our, our taxes now would be? And uh, Kevin answered that in the affirmative that we would still have the same position, uh, although our tax liens go first, this lien would go second, and then any subsequent uh, liens would then, mortgages. or mortgages would then be addressed. So we would have effectively the same ability we have now if somebody doesn't pay their their taxes if we go to the, the user fee. I don't have a, a quick answer on what has been done in terms of water flow and reduction. I know when we took over, that was one of uh, the things that we talked about was looking at both the electrical and uh, wastewater water usage at the uh, facilities. I, I can attest that there has been work. The degree to which I can't quantify, but uh, I have that down to uh, speak with buildings and grounds to uh, try to get an answer for the next meeting on that. And that's all I have. Okay, I'm sure it's sparked some questions. Councilman Lee. Just to follow, because I, I did have the occasion to read that article about Holyoke, and I want to make sure something's clear. <laughs> In Holyoke, there were council members who were seeking the authority to shut people's water off if the sewer fee was not paid. We're not doing that, correct? Yeah, we, we don't control the water, and I'm okay. not sure if, if Holyoke actually has a water, it's municipal a, water system. or It's a municipal system, but what's, what's interesting about it is that the sewer plant is privately managed. Oh. So I don't, that, that may open up another whole set of different circumstances there, but we're not interested in getting involved in the water service. The we lean have, process no is the ability. same one we would use on the tax side. Correct. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Councilman Kensler. Uh, yeah, through Scott to uh, the town manager. Uh, do we know, uh, Matt, in regards to the uh, flushless systems we have here yet, do we know if we have saved as opposed to last year, you know, does the water consumption saved overrule the cost of the filtration? Yeah. To the best of my knowledge, I don't think they've done that analysis yet. I mean, that no, no. would be something that would be presented during is it, the budget it process. Is it projected to based on the when we went and did it? Or are we just doing it's, an environmentally friendly thing? 
No, I, I think <laughs> they they saw it from two different perspectives. One, to reduce the the water use, and and two, to be environmentally friendly. Um, you know, to be you know upfront with this, I, I think you know we we only did a couple, maybe three, I think urinals. Um, so I wouldn't expect to see a large savings anyways based upon that. I mean, it's not going to cut our bill in half by any stretch of the imagination. And then, you know, even though they're there, if they're not being used. So, I, you know, I, I don't know if you're going to see a big savings right, within right. this building. Um, you know, where, where that tends <clears throat> to show any considerable savings is going to be in large use areas and again we really haven't you know gone out and you know replaced all the urinals with you know the no flush so again i, I think we're we're in buildings and grounds has taken a very uh, conservative approach to saying okay we're not we haven't bought totally into this yet let's do some pilot projects to see you know what the pros and cons um, you know, some areas we find that they probably don't work as well uh, just from the use, because if you get a lot of use on them, it tends to uh, create some uh, odor issues. Other environmental issues. Right. Yeah. Immediate environmental issues. Yeah. <laughs> and so I, I think, you know, as, as we try this to find ways to try to conserve the water and, and be a, a good steward of the uh, environment, sometimes it doesn't make sense. So that's, that's kind of the approach they're taking. Okay, thank you. Any other questions for the town manager? Thank you, Matt. Next, we have town attorney report and communications. Kevin? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just getting first to uh, Councilor Hall's question. <clears throat> the entity we deal with is the Thompsonville Fire District. Um, and they're the legal entity that exists regardless of the outcome of this suit. The same way the town council or excuse me, the town of Enfield is the legal entity that's here. The town council makes decisions on behalf of that entity. The board of fire commissioners makes decisions on behalf of the uh, uh, fire district. People can challenge any particular uh, exercise of the powers that, that you exercise as the town council or, or the board of fire commissioners <coughs> exercises uh, on behalf of the fire district, but it doesn't change what the legal entity is or doesn't void our contracts that are previously entered into. Um, I don't, I haven't seen any challenge to the uh, uh, sitting of the commissioners in, the, in terms of an election or anything else like that. So they're challenging a specific action uh, or lack of action uh, in the fire district suit. It doesn't change the legal entity that we've contracted with or entered into uh, with that. So I hope that answers that. To follow up, Kevin, on that. Yep. I understand we had a different entity before when we entered into the original agreement with the Thompsonville Fire Department. So I guess my question goes to, as it stands now, if we had to get into an agreement, for example, where to store the dirt on town property, somebody has to be legally responsible for signing that agreement. You know, I, I'm kind of equating it to if I don't know who the legal seller is on a property, then I can't enter into a contract with that particular person. So I guess it's more to where we sit now. Do, do we, as a town, have to know who is legal to sign those documents and who isn't? I mean, that's where I'm asking the question, I guess, yeah. is as it sits now. Yeah. The, the, the legal entity we would enter into any agreements with is the Thompsonville Fire District, not the fire department. They, the fire district employs the fire department over, over there. So the Enfield Fire District, or excuse me, Thompsonville tire, Fire District is who we would enter into. Um, and you know, to a certain degree, we presume that any entity, whether it's a corporate entity, the state, another municipality, fire district, is operating within the scope of their authority and following their procedures. If someone challenges uh, the entity's actions and whether or not they follow their procedures, that has to go through that, that process it goes through. Again, whether it's another municipality, the state, a fire district, or a corporation, uh, you know, presumably could be in the same boat. So, um, you know, so if as, it's, a, as a council, we have to do our due diligence to understand who 
who we're dealing with. Certainly, exactly. I mean, if we're entering into a partnership, we got to get usually a you know partnership resolution or corporation. You're getting into a corporate resolution showing that they've empowered someone to sign on behalf of that. With a public entity, you know, we've got <clears throat> who the elected officials are. Uh, they've been certified by the Secretary of State. Mm -hmm. uh, they're acting in a you know. It, it, you could you could think of a, a, a lot of situations, whether it was this council or another town or, or a fire district, where a duly elected body may uh, have improperly posted its meeting and takes an action. They have to go back and reconfirm it, or theoretically could be voided by the Freedom of Information Commission. But we don't police the posting of every other body that goes on there. We presume that they've followed the laws and requirements on that. Um, if we know of something, then clearly we're going to take appropriate steps to protect ourselves. That's on that. But okay. all right, thank you. Okay, that good. And just uh, one other update. Um, I did uh, work with Della uh, from it, our tax collector on the tax sale that we went through. I think the most successful portion of it was the fact that we started off with 36 or 37 properties. By the time the sale date came down, we were down to seven. Wow. Uh, on that, so we either. Uh, we're paid off, uh, brought current payment plans put in place, or a couple of minor ones that we uh, made some other arrangements with on that. Uh, we went to the sale with uh, just seven going to bid. Uh, five had no bids on it, and two of them went to, uh, went to sale, and that process is proceeding. So um, it certainly uh, brought everyone's attention uh, to that, and we were able to, uh, the Dell was in her staff were able to collect uh, some significant sums on that, and uh, I think they're planning another one for uh, next early winter so thanks That's Kevin Thank questions you. for the town attorney councilman hall uh, the two that went to sale which properties were they Pardon me? the two that went to sale which properties were they the two that, uh, that went to sale were 44 Parker Street and 42 Steel Road and both sold in excess of our liens <laughs> on that so Any other questions for Kevin? Thank, Thank you, you, Kevin. Next, we have reports of special committees of the council. First, the Enfield High School Renovation Building Committee. Ken? Um, I would like to call up Walter. Um, Walter. He's very, very active in the committee. And let him you know, answer some questions from the council and talk about where he feels the uh, high school is at this point and just give a different perspective on everything. Great. Yep. Walter if it's Cruzel. okay with you guys, Walter Cruzel, 21 Charlie Road. And tonight I'm wearing my third hat, uh, mm -hmm. member of the Enfield Building Construction Committee. Uh, to date, we are, and matter of fact, today is actually an anniversary. If all goes well, three years from today will be our first, the senior, the freshman class of that entered today will be seniors in our new high school the first Tuesday of September. Uh, 2016 so I wanted to add that so we've been working with the uh, the architect on fast what we we got approved through the Bureau of Schools and there's a new name for it and don't don't ask me because the state changes the name every year so to fast track our our building where we have permission to build the Fermi wing which is the steam wing and, and uh, submit the plans for building the Fermi wing first. So the architect is diligently working to get the Fermi wing finalized, designed, and to the Bureau by December, I believe. And there's also going to be uh, more, now that school's back in session, there's gonna be more user group meetings with the uh, faculty to uh, finalize the design of that. And they also have to get a part of the rest of the school design done by December too, but that's also, you know, all being fat through this fast track. The contractor is is on is on board working diligently, setting schedules. Uh, shovel should be going in the ground by July one of two thousand fourteen on the Fermi wing. And we'll you know we'll confirm that within the next next few meetings. And other than that it's uh, gung ho you know we're we're rolling as we've Changed our meetings now to every other Thursday, so our next meeting won't be this Thursday. It'll be next Thursday, the whatever twelfth, I believe. Yes, twelfth, and it's we're still at meet uh, six thirty at the 
B105 in, in Enfield High School. Any questions, Great. comments? Questions, uh, questions for Walter. Councilman Kenzer has a question. Two questions, Two. actually. Uh, Walter, I know you're 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 really good at with the numbers. Um, how do you how do you feel right now? It's going in terms of um, staying close to the budget, within the budget, saving money. That that talk to that for a little bit, and then I have the, another question. Uh, the 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 contractor has put together a estimate, and we are within six hundred thousand dollars of the a little six hundred thousand dollars over what the projected $103 million is right now, but it's within the, the, the margin of error that we should be right, right, you know, right to budget at this point. And if I understand correctly, the, the reserves with, the, with, with what we're doing now are, are less likely to be used up, thus maybe saving us some money down the road? Yes. Okay. Yes. That, that's and also the, with the fast track, and that we chopped a year off the whole uh, the whole thing because we were supposed to originally open in 2017. That's going to bring some, uh, you know, keep us within budget also. Excellent. Then just a much easier question on the um, discussion earlier about the the, the uh, automatic flushing without uh, rather the the non flushing urinals. I actually just sent an email to to the architect to try to get an answer for that. So we will. It, we will when you do, it. can you f you know the, I guess the three questions would be. Uh, environmental yes. impact. Yes. You know what? How much water would we be saving use, and then, you know, a cost. You know, for other schools that have done it. I'm sure they've. There's. Can, there's probably. Uh, I been a will couple. bring it up at my next meeting with them on next Thursday. And just see if unless a, I get an email sooner, I'll forward it to you. If it's a positive or a negative or in, okay. in areas. Thanks. Appreciate your hard work. Thanks, Tom. Councilman Edgar. Yeah, Walter. <clears throat> I think you answered both my questions, but let me run through. I read all your minutes, and at one time you were four to six months behind. I take it fast track is made up that time. Yes, it has. Yes, it has. Okay. I mean, we are going to have the, 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 the kids will be there September 16th. There will be parts of the building that will not be finished. I will, we'll, we'll, we'll say that right now. <clears throat> but we're working on trying to bring that in as much as possible. But the, the goal is right now that three years from today, the first Tuesday of September, if that's still the schedule that, that the, uh, the, the school board keeps, we will have the first combined Stop. class of 2017. Okay. But it won't be completely finished. But it won't it'll, affect it, the students. No, because there will be more of the auditorium and the music wing that, that, that's, being, that's being left behind. Because of the demolition of the, the old D wing, uh, that, that part of the building, the, the Fermi wing will be complete, the A wing will be complete, but that part of the building may still need some more tweaking and some more finishing. The music department and, and, and the auditorium. And okay, I understand that. Now, the other question, at one time in your minutes you were six to eight million over. I've taken, you've cut it down to we've, six. We've, 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 we went back and saw what we needed. We've, we've cut some things out. And we, we brought it in, like I said, our estimate right now is about 600000 But again, it's just an estimate at this point anyway. When we, when we start setting it all out for bids and everything, we're going to just have to control the cost at that point and bring it back in. Yeah. But no, it sounds like from what was in your minutes as I read through them, you've come a long way. Yes, we have. Thank but you. We, we, I agree we were $6 million at one point, but we've, we brought those costs in and, and, and we're staying on top of it. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks, Red. Councilman Lee. Um, Scott, through, through you to Matt. What, there was the paperwork trail caught up with. I know the, um, I had asked you last week about the membership was looking for uh, an update on some contracts and so forth. Is that? Contract for the uh, uh, construction manager at risk. Yeah. It's still being worked on. Okay. Thank you. Not my purview. I can't answer that. <laughs> Any other questions for Walter? Great, Walter, and if you, thanks. And if you, you want to keep this on a monthly basis, I have no problem presenting any, any new information. Perfect. Great. Thanks, Walter. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Any other reports from special committees of the council? Councilman Hall. Uh, just a very quick comment. Uh, it was opening day for our schools today. Um, the school security uh, rolled out today, and the feedback was overwhelmingly good. Um, our um, security officers that were at the schools were greeted 
um, by welcoming groups of parents and lots of handshaking and thanking them. Um, the principals were ecstatic. The office staff were really excited to have them there. So we had some, we had a couple minor glitches which go to more of the school policy um, and those will be discussed uh, at the security meeting we have tomorrow morning, but those were definitely um, on the policy side of the house for the Board of Ed. So overwhelming, uh, great reception. The guards uh, were really happy to be there and the kids were really uh, happy to see them. So overall, terrific day for the first day. Any other reports of special committees of the council? Councilman Stokes. I just want to report that the Social Service Committee met uh, a couple weeks ago, myself and Scott Copen and Cindy Mangini. Uh, we met with Pam Brown and uh, some representatives from the uh, group that's talking about uh, creating a volunteer service for helping uh, senior adults in our community that are in their homes and may need some light work done around the house and uh, create a, a volunteerism type situation where folks can go in and and help to change a, a, a wall socket or uh, take care of those kind of simple things when it comes to home maintenance. And uh, we met, we talked about it, we gave some advice back to Pam um, to talk to the uh, town risk manager to find out you know, where the town sits in this. But we had a good conversation. I'm sure it's going to come back to council, but we did, uh, I think it was the council that asked for the committee to look at it, and we did. And so uh, uh, we'll get back to you. So, Thanks, Greg. Deputy Mayor Nelson. Through the mayor to the town manager, if I could get a copy of what Councilman Hall is talking about, um, the reports from the armed guards saying that it was a good day, there were uh, no problems. Um, I, I mean, every big process like this, there's always problems when you roll it out. Uh, I did receive several complaints, not a lot, but several complaints, no IDs were taken, stuff like that. And, and I know it's a huge undertaking whether I support it or not, it's going to have glitches, but I, I just want the residents to know that they will work on the glitches. They'll get them taken care of. Um, it wasn't a flawless day, but it did overall. Um, all the kids are safe, so it worked. But if we could get the updates instead of the committee, and this is what I'm talking about with the things happening in this committee that the entire council is not privy to, something like that should come to the entire council. I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Councilman Mangini. Thank you. Um, I think Councilman Hall made a comment a little earlier, if I'm not mistaken. I think we all got emails. Greg, I think you got one, Carol and, and I did, that in fact we have a security meeting tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. And I believe, um, if I'm not mistaken, part of um, the issue, you know, is the ongoing review of the process. So maybe I'm missing something, but I think that was the whole idea behind having the meeting tomorrow. Uh, part of it is to review what is happening in the school. So I don't, I don't see where the issue is. Thank you. If I can just add up, Mr. Mayor. Also, council members are always welcome to, the, to these committee meetings. Uh, some things are in open session, some are not, but we'd always welcome all council members and we have from the start to come to the meetings and listen in and stuff. So yeah, we'll get a, we'll get a briefing. And if the, if the uh, town council would like uh, to have in our next meeting uh, for the 530 meeting uh, that we could have an update from our public service folks to give an update how it did go the first three weeks. The first day you really, and I agree with both <laughs> folks here, uh, there were glitches and we're working on it. And I agree with Deputy Mayor Nelson, the kids are safe. That's We disagree on some items, but we don't disagree on that. And so, but uh, if we'd like to have uh, the leadership, you know, invite the public safety directors and the folks in charge of this and get a full briefing to the council, uh, I think that'd be great. I think it'd be needed, so. Any other? I, I just, I got a comment just to add on, because I had a, a couple conversations today with uh, Public Safety Director Chris Bromson, just giving me some updates. And um, I, I don't think it'd be a bad idea to have Chris put, put together, um, you know, a, a quick email memo um, tomorrow and say, and give the highlights of today and, and tomorrow. I know there was uh, the principals at some of the elementary schools, because a lot of parents come on the first day, um, specifically ask that they don't take uh, the ID at, at the front door. Um, and that um, it was the decision to not to take away the, the sticker, the um, visitor sticker that goes on, um, to, to actually have them removed when they left the building. 
um, but starting tomorrow, it, it's it's full ID uh, required. Um, so it was an accommodation requested by some principals for day one. Um, and just a, another story, um, and I'm sure you're going to hear about these. Um, at one of the elementary schools, a, a young girl um, was playing on on one of the um, uh, on one of the playscapes and and got stuck. Um, and it was the school security officer that was the first to respond, called uh, called in the resources, and and was able to keep the the child calm, um, and make all the needed contacts quick. Um, and uh, and emergency personnel came and, and removed the child from the playscape. And the playscape's going to be uh, inspected tomorrow, um, you know, for why was there, uh, you know, why did that occur? So you're gonna have these types of stories, mm -hmm. um, whether the school security officer uh, only was there and that would have happened or, or a teacher administrator, um, but again, it's it's we have these uh, these folks uh, stationed within the school, and uh, you know those are positive outcomes. And and but um, there's always going to be issues as well. So it's new. So it doesn't hurt to communicate and let people know about uh, what were the experiences, and we can share it with with the public and with the parents and with the students as well, just to make sure that you know we're hearing everything as well. It's it's a new service. Um, but overall, they were very happy with, with day one. And um, so if, if we could get a report, yeah. that, that would be great. And, and, and if we feel it's a need in two weeks to, you know, to have a full-blown report at, at the special meeting, um, we can see at that time if that's something necessary over and above uh, some written reports that, that come from the committee. And, and Matt, let me just say that, that uh, both uh, Mr. Bromson and, and Chief Faraz have started their day early this morning and were traveling throughout the day to go into all the school sites and visiting them, not just in the morning when it started, but also in the afternoon when they're dismissing. Um, so they had a long day, so I let them go early because we had talked, at least uh, they and I had talked about having some presentation tonight as well, but it just... If you had talked to him when I talked to him late in the day, you'd understand why that probably wasn't a good thing to have him come in. But the intention was that we are going to provide a report to all of council about the good and the bad. Because, uh, you know, I, I think overall it was a very good day for everybody, not just from our perspective with the, the, the security officers, but for the schools themselves. I mean, you know, typically on the first day of school, there are usually a lot of issues. Um, and I think uh, when I spoke to the uh, superintendent uh, late in the day, he felt that everything was going, I haven't heard otherwise, uh, was going very good outside of the school security officer part as well. Um, you know, we did, we did a lot of work in the buildings over the summer, um, probably not as much as we like to have done because we had a lot of projects going on. But, um, you know, so it was, I think, a very good opening day all around. Um, but again, you know, a council a person, uh, Nelson's right, you know, not everything goes flawlessly, but those are the things we learn from. And uh, I think anything that did, uh, you know, not meet what, what our expectations were, were, were addressed in some way, shape or form. And that's, I think what, you know, we should expect is that there's going to be some issues, we address them and we move on. But I think overall it was very favorable, but let's, let's get that written report. Great, anyone else? Councilman Crowley. Yeah, um, being the first day of school, of course, it was a very exciting day for us, uh, probably to get the kids back off and out of the house for a while, which is great. The Crowley household is empty. Not that we don't love our kids. For you, it was a very exciting day. <laughs> but uh, I was kind of anxiously waiting them to come home tonight so I could ask my, my kids. But I have four still that are in school and asked them what they thought about the guard being there and um, being all excited when I saw them at, at my two seventh graders, uh, Francis and Timothy, both said, fine, why? <laughs> like it was no big deal. Um, they saw the guard. It didn't matter. Didn't really matter to them. I said, did, it, did he say hi to you? He goes, oh, yeah, said hi, and he just kept walking. So it really had very little effect on their day. Um, but the nice part is they did come home tonight, and, and they will come home tonight. And, and every other day I do I suspect, and uh, hopefully we never have to know what the real uh, outcome would be of, of having a guard or not having a guard there at the school. 
Uh, my two high school kids just said they saw the guy, they said hi to him, and he said, fine. We see, the, we see an officer every day in school, so it's not a big deal to them. Um, same as junior high. Um, but it seemed like it was a positive thing, and, and as Ken said, there are just going to be ups and downs with everything we do. I'm sure teachers had issues today, and I'm sure principals had issues today. So the first day of school, everybody has issues. Um, but all in all, I think it was a positive day. So uh, good job to the guys that are doing it. Uh, we thank them, um, and good job to everyone up there that supports it. Thank you. Anyone else? Reports this about Deputy Mayor Nelson. I, I think my point is just that the communication, we all represent the town, and when somebody calls each one of us with a concern and we don't have that answer for them, we should have that answer. Something as simple as, you know, the first day of school, we're not doing IDs. If we had all known that, we could have had that right off. It wouldn't have gone all over Facebook. It wouldn't have been an issue at all. You know, we're spending all this money. We're supposed to be checking your IDs. They didn't get checked. And when I was asked the question, I don't have the answer. That's not executive session material. And the entire council should know. Like the $10,000 for the gentleman who spoke at Enfield High. The entire council was not aware we were spending $10,000 for this. And we should on a purchase like this. I mean, whether it's a yes or a no, we still should all know what this committee is doing. It's not behind closed doors. DPW has been called out many times for attempting to bring stuff to the council. We've never made decisions behind closed doors. So how is this committee getting away with it? And this is just another example of why the 11 of us need to know what's going on so we can answer the people who put us here. That's all. Thank you. Councilman Mangini. Yeah, maybe I can direct a question through you, Scott, to our town manager. You know, about the $9,436, I think, was the amount, if I'm not mistaken. I, my, my question, when I did question, you know, the amount and uh, how it came about, Matt, if I'm not mistaken, wasn't that an internal transfer from the police department fund? I mean, don't, don't departments have authorization to, to transfer uh, certain amounts or small amounts of dollars within their own um, purview? Uh, maybe I'm misunderstanding, but I, I thought if there's a certain uh, project or a certain um, expense that they had to cover that, whether PD, whether public works, whether social services, um, they're, they're authorized or they're, um, you know, encouraged to uh, use that money accordingly. Am I mistaken on that? Well, my uh, recollection, I, I don't have a recollection if there was a transfer that was necessary. Um, I just off the top of my head I can't answer I have to look to, to see that but it was uh, money that was existing in accounts um, from last year's budget when they entered into the agreement to have them come there and and again I, I think it's it's important to understand that um, you know we we were not directed by uh, anybody whether it was from the board board of education itself or the town council members to do that it was something that was brought to me by both uh, uh, the deputy uh, superintendent and, and our director of public safety saying, again, the primary focus was the training and the review that we needed to do with um, the school uh, staff, as well as reviewing different uh, parts of our operational plan to make sure that, you know, we weren't missing anything. Um, you know, him speaking was something that we were able to throw on since he was going to be here, he wasn't doing anything that night. Um, we got actually a lot more from him for the same amount than, than uh, if we didn't ask that, plus some other things that uh, he ended up uh, working with us on. So, you know, I think you've entrusted us by, by adopting a budget and tell us to expend it in a way that makes the most sense and gets the greatest good. Uh, you know, we, we spend money you know, from the town side, 50 to $53 million a year, uh, you know, those things that, that have to come to get council authority, we come to council and get authority to spend those things that within our ability to spend, you know, we spend them. And, um, you know, sometimes we, we don't <coughs> think about, you know, coming back to council and letting, you know, you know, I would, I would have no problem doing that. And in hindsight, I think it would have been a good thing. But again, Everything associated with the the school security program, from from our 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 perspective, was focused on getting to today. And um, let me just say that that you know what you know the the work that the chief uh, Chris Bromson, um, 
you know, members of the public uh, or public works department from the building ground, uh, you know, spent a lot of time. It was an enormous, inordinate amount of time um, to get to today. And, and I think that if you would have spoken to him when we actually got the go ahead to, uh, you know, start the hiring process from council and the Board of Education, um, you know, we, 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 be, we knew we had to do it, but we didn't believe that we could do it. And, and we haven't gotten to where we want to be yet. I mean, there's still a lot of work to do, don't get me wrong. But, uh, you know, they did a lot of work. And again, I, I don't think that, that you know, if, if there was, you know, something that was inappropriate by any committee uh, come to staff, we wouldn't, we wouldn't do it. We, op we try to operate within the authority council grants to us. Thank you for clarifying. Councilman Kensler. Um, I, I, I just to piggyback on one of Kenny's points, the, the, the thing that concerns me is, is not the expenditure so much of the money. If you need to do it, you need to do it. It's next year when we go back and look at budgets, I want to make sure the dollars that we spend on anything in the town uh, is allocated from where it's supposed to come from or we go and we get more money to do it so that when it comes time for next year's budget, I understand this money came out of professional development, I think, out of the police budget. I might be wrong. Uh, but let's I, say I that's the, yeah, let's just say that's the category. Next year, Carl comes back and does his budget. Is it two is it ten thousand nine thousand four hundred and thirty six dollars more than it should be because that money was a one time thing? You know what I mean? So I wanna make sure that all the ducks are in a row. The second point you No, know, I, I I hear what you're saying. Okay. <laughs> This is the second point is I think we, like we we get notified on Saturday night when there's a crash on the other side of town and a road's closed. There, you guys are we're great about that. We should get the non-committee members updates of the good, the glitches, what whatever you know as they are going on because you know Ken's point. I got calls and emails this morning about this about the same thing, and then the other one was um, uh, the. There's a few schools that aren't staffed yet that have some police rotating through them. A lot well, every every school has a had a guard officer. this morning. Yes, and they but we, they all okay. We we did have and and this isn't as uncommon as you might think. Um, <clears throat> you know, we've stepped it up a little bit. We've requested much like what we did after um, uh, the incident in December, uh, at Newtown. You know, we we had our district cars rotate through the schools so uh, if yeah i got if, a lot of reports of there with there's two cruisers at this school at one moment there was one at this school there was and and you know there you know understand when when school opens we tend to have a heavier presence in in the areas around the schools to begin with because anyway, we want to yeah. make sure that you know traffic is behaving in a manner sure. that creates a safe environment and, and i know a council member uh, had asked about uh, a report of four police cars at one of the schools and when I inquired about it it turned out that they were doing some radar um, around that school you know they must that's have been exactly gathering. the kind of thing we would like to know about because then when the concerned resident says was there an incident today at such and such a school I saw four cruisers no I just got a notice actually that they were going to be doing some right. traffic enforcement down there because you know it's a dangerous intersection sure. that would be per a perfect right. example so that, that's my request. Yep. If, I don't know how you put it together, but if we can get those out, I, I don't need to, you know, go to every meeting. I trust the professionals, but those kind of things will, if people have concerns, it'll belay them right away if we know the answer. Sure. Thanks. Councilman Bosco. <clears throat> well, I guess the way I look at it is if the police didn't budget this in their budget, then they asked for $10,000 more than they needed. So next year, we got to remember, they got $10,000 extra in their budget that they can just go and that they say they need for training, they can just find and pull out. I mean, that, that, that's all that's to it. So I guess we're going to need to watch the budgets a little tighter because if we can pull this money out, what about the training that they said they needed for it ahead of time that they told us last year that we needed? Councilman Arnone. In Matt's defense, when I get those uh, reports, like the four cruisers, I was the one to shout off an email to him, and he gets it right back to me, and I get right back to the person. So Matt's been really good when I fire out the emails to ask those questions, and 
I, I recommend, I guess, doing it, but then 11 of them will probably won't get them back so fast. But I appreciate you getting back to me on those today. Anything else Just under Deputy Mayor Nelson? It, it's accounting. The council set a certain dollar amount for the armed guards, and that's what was told to the to the voters. When you take ten thousand dollars out of another line, that is not part of that. That that I mean, when you came to town, Matt, you made sure we stopped doing that because we never had a true accounting of what this costs. And in two years or whenever the guards are revisited, we need to know what the true number is. Now Carl could have transferred that money in his own budget to something that he needed in the police department, which he does year after year. So I, that's all I'm saying is that money, it needs to stay within the armed guard so we have a true accounting of what this is costing. Yeah, and and, and I think, you know, we, we never looked at, you know, that piece really as, I mean, you know, the whole, the whole strategy is interrelated, don't get me wrong. What we saw, you know, the, Mr. Dorn's part of this really was outside of, of the armed guard piece. Uh -huh. So, you know, what we've done thus far is what we accounted for in, in the budget is just the security officer piece. You know, we haven't started, you know, putting together, you know, what it's going to look like because, again, we, we didn't really have a good idea in terms of training that's going to be necessary for staff. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, obviously the Board of Education hadn't put any money aside for that type of work. Um, the opportunity to lock him in for the date that just worked really good for us to get him um, in front of the teachers and, and the staff. And we were really concerned that if we didn't get it there, you know, we would miss an opportunity because, um, you know, the school has a lot of things going on. They get into the, their curriculum. We lose a lot of opportunity to talk to all the teachers and, and even um, you know, if, if you sit through those meetings with me and hear, you know, the, the amount of work that they do with their teachers where you can't, you know, get, get opportunities to get the message across to them for the safety and security, if we didn't lock it in, we would have missed it. And so and, and that, that's why, you know, but I, I agree that, you know, we're going to have a true cost accounting of everything related to security because I think we all need to know what that is. Mm -hmm. um, and so as part of the budget, you will see that for next year. Right, but even like a simple email out to the 11 counselors saying that this is what the town was doing, hiring this gentleman, this is why, this is the cost. Yep. So when we are ch questioned or challenged about this, we have the answers. But yep. when you have to read it in the newspaper, and then I have to call you and yep. find out, that's really not the way we should be yep. finding out things Agreed. in town. Yep. yep. Thank that's you. Us. Yep. Anything else under special committees of the council? Anything else under special committees yeah, of the council? Go ahead. And I don't mean to prolong this. But Matt, do we know the amount of people that he actually spoke to as far as uh, between the teachers and the public? I mean, the size of the crowd that he spoke to? Uh, I want to say that uh, Administration. for this, yeah, it was, it was supposed to be all their teaching staff um, as well as office staff. No, I, I can't verify that, but they were doing it in the Enfield uh, High School uh, Auditorium, and I think that's, what, about 700, seats about 700, so. So between that and the night before? Yeah. It is, it's probably, you know, within the the seven to 800 range is what my guess would be, Thank because you. my guess is, you know, they didn't have everybody they thought they would have there um, for that. But, right. but again, it wasn't just that, and, and just to let you know, um, there's a number of things that came out of his visit in terms of additional work that that um, we're probably going to be working with him to bring him back for not only additional training uh, for the school staff but also town staff because um, you know what we found in working with him is there are a lot of applicable training aids that, that he can bring to, to a lot of our facilities where we you know, you, you don't think about it, but, you know, if you talk to any of our staff on a given day, we deal with a lot of individuals that uh, present uh, safety risk and security risk for us. And so if we can piggyback, you know, that, that type of work, we get, you know, two bangs for that, that one buck that we get. Yeah, I thought this presentation was yeah. very good. Thank you. 
Carol. Quick, just a quick item, Matt. The link to that um, speaker, Mr. Dorn, is that still on the website for folks to see? Actually, we got a Q notify today that it's been posted. Okay. So that okay, was one of the good. Q notifies that at least I read today. It yeah, might it might know. have come out a day or two before. It was today, right? Yeah. 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 So it's it's just for the general public out there. It's a great great. Uh, he's a great speaker, and he did a, gr a lot of great work in our schools and uh, really informative. So go to the website and watch it. Amazing, amazing credentials. So. Just just to let you know, um, and I'm sorry to drag this out, but. He uh, has been working with some other school districts in um, Connecticut. Uh, his company to do a complete assessment is somewhere in the forty to sixty thousand dollar range. And I think what 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 we took away from what he brought to the table is, you know, we're not in a position where we need that because again, I think there's been a lot of work. Um, what he was able to bring, you know, is what I consider value added. Saying, you know. Did you think about this? Um, but overall, um, and I don't know if this came out as clear as what I, I think I would like to have come out. But you know, overall, the plans that we've put together, you know, from his perspective, were very good. And again, he was just giving us value-added uh, work. But you know, his connection with certain staff members of the school, I think, is invaluable. And and again, using him in a way that limits our costs but gets the the largest. Um, benefit for the people that need that benefit and again that's the teachers and the school administrative staff um, at each of the schools um, is is going to be a good use of money going down the road one quick thing scott um just to piggyback on what matt had said there were endless hours put in by public works and i.t and the police department uh, building and grounds over the last six months and a lot of it is unseen work and Matt touched on it and we should definitely thank all those workers because it was countless hours and over and above their normal work so thank you to all of them anyone else we done <laughs> we're done all right. I'm going to apologize to my wife. We're moving old business. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to be home early so tonight. <laughs> That's right. All right. Under old business appointments, town council appointed items 1 through 12. I believe they all remain on the table, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Appointments, town manager appointed, council approved items 1 through 13. Matt, you have more openings than we do. What are you going to do about it? <laughs> Get them filled. <laughs> They all remain on the table, correct? Uh, does the, uh, and item C and D remain on the table. Under new business, there is no consent agenda. Under appointments, town council appointed item three, is there a nomination Patriot Award Committee? I'd like to make a motion to reappoint Thomas Berry to the Patriot Award Committee. Motion by Deputy Mayor Nelson, seconded by Councilman Stokes. Is there a motion to close motion nominations second. by Councilman Crowley, seconded by Deputy Mayor Nelson? All those in favor of closing nominations? Those opposed? Nominations are closed. Any discussion? Sensing none, roll call, please. Councilman Crowley? Thomas Berry. Councilman Edgar? Four. Councilman Hall? Thomas Berry. Mayor Copen? Thomas Berry. Councilman Kinsler? Thomas Berry. Councilman Lee is out. Councilman Mangini? Thomas Berry. Deputy Mayor Nelson. Thomas Berry. Councilman Stokes. Thomas Berry. And is Councilman Nelson there? No, oh, I'm sorry. Councilman Arnone. Thomas Berry. And Councilman Bosco is out. So that makes nine in favor, none against, no abstentions. Any other appointments, Council? Appointments, Town Manager remains on the table. Uh, the discussion resolution, resolution adopting the amendment to the Enfield Town Code Chapter 86 Utilities, this remains on the table, correct? And then uh, item E, discussion, discussion on Thompsonville use of property during construction, Matt. Yes, I, uh, as I stated earlier, had a, a conversation with the attorney representing the uh, Thompsonville Fire District. Uh, what he indicated was uh, I think similar, somewhat similar to what was said earlier tonight, that uh, the the judge did take the whole case at their uh, trial or their their hearing. Um, 
they were given permission to strip the land and would like to proceed with that. And uh, again, unless I hear to the contrary, we are going to accept that dirt. Um, you know, we do have a location for it that was checked out by uh, our staff members to make sure that, uh, you know, wouldn't interfere with anything and be a good place to store it until uh, the demolition and then relocating it into the hole uh, that's left. So unless I hear something different, uh, when they start stripping it, we're going to direct them to the location to place it. Okay. Discussion. Deputy Mayor Nelson. <coughs> Both sides of the fence. I, I can't imagine a judge saying strip the land if he's going to say put it back. But if he does, if we haven't done anything with Higgins at that point and the dirt is still there, would it be wise for us to let them have it back? I mean, the taxpayers are going to pay if that fill leaves off site and they have to fill the hole. They got to buy fill back, and at one hundred and twenty-five dollars a yard, it's going to cost them a lot of money. Right. You know, and the key is the trucking. It's not the fill. Right. And the councilman Edgar, when he read that section, I think the 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 wording, if it has to be put off site is trucking that's what they're talking about so yep. if the town didn't take it or there was excess they've got to pay to truck this fill away so again the taxpayers would have to pay that we're all taxpayers every one of us i don't care if it's fire or town it's all the same pocket yep. so i would like to just keep it for the town because we know we can use it and just as a backup god forbid something happens in court and it doesn't go their way and it goes the other group's way the dirt is there to put back in the hole so we don't look at a hole I mean, so I'm trying to play both sides of the fence here. Everybody's happy because ultimately we can't stop them from doing what they're doing, if I'm correct in what you said. So if we don't take the dirt, Monday the trucks are coming and they're hauling it away. They're going to haul it away for free because they're not paying for the fill. It washes out the trucking. But they're not going to haul it back for free. All right. So well, I, I, I don't know if, if it's for free or not because I, I haven't seen what their, their bids are mm -hmm. and don't need to see what those are. Um, so I, I can't answer that piece. Re regard, it does, it's going to cost money. Right. And yeah. that's something that, regardless of what happens, the taxpayers don't want to pay any more money. It's not fair to them. Right. So I, I mean, to work with the fire department, we sold them the land. I mean, all along, we've had the assumption we were taking the fill for Higgins. I don't know why it would change now. I support taking the fill still. Thank you. Councilman Edgar. When you stay stripping the land, what do you mean? You mean topsoil off, or you're yeah, going yeah, way the, down? What are you doing? Yeah, well, my understanding is they're going to be removing about 4,600 yards of material from that site. So that's what I mean by stripping it, is they're going to take whatever that depth is um, and take it away. Either place it on a location on town property for us to utilize for the Higgins, or they're going to, to take it away. Okay, well, when you said stripping, I wasn't sure what you meant. Uh, stripping is usually topsoil, isn't it, huh? Kenny? Uh, it, it's preparing the site. I mean, it could be anything. They're doing all parking lots, I mean, so you've got a deep gravel base and stuff like that that's got to go in. Yeah. You know, the footings of the building yeah. are down well, deep. The issue, well, the issue is that the, the soils that are there, the geotechnical uh, work on it showed that uh, they couldn't get the compaction they needed so the soils aren't any good for the compaction that they would need for the the footings and and everything um so they you know and again i don't know a lot about this so i may be speaking totally out of you're right but you're but my understanding is that they're going to have to remove all that and they're going to probably have to bring other materials in to to then be able to utilize for the uh, uh the compaction so can I ask uh, Mr. Cross a question? What did what did the judge say? I don't believe Councilman Edgar, I'm not sure. I want to be fair to all. I don't know if we engage audience is that Well, he was there, he knows what the judge said. And council I've, allow it? Mr. Mayor, <laughs> I just want to get because we establish a precedent, so if we're going to engage audience, then someone has the right to do it at another time. So I personally think that getting into a dialogue with 
audience members on different, either side of the fence would not be good. Um, if we had a representative, the lawyers here, something that might be better. But I don't want to ha start pitting us against one side or the other and those kind of things there. Uh, they're passionate about it. Some of us are passionate about it. I think it, I don't think it'd be a good thing right now. So. Oh, just to clarify, I made a request. Well, I think these folks talked to their attorney. Do you have the answer to Councilman Edgar's question? Yeah, what what uh, their attorney told me was their the judge allowed uh, or was going to allow them to begin the stripping of the land, but they're. I think uh, the what he said they could do anything up to uh, any action that requires a building permit. So right. the removal of the dirt does not require a building permit. Uh, one of the reasons I asked the questions, I understood that the judge said, and I wasn't there. That's why I wanted an ans answer here that they could remove topsoil. Now that is not getting the excavation or anything else ready. That's just to take the topsoil off. Okay. Now, I mean, I'm not taking an issue with the fire department for or mm -hmm. against it. My issue has always been the people had a right to vote, mm -hmm. okay? And I think, in my mind, that we should do nothing on this until it comes out of court. If it comes out of court the other way, who's going to put it back? I mean... Mm -hmm. Well, that, that it, I think... It, it just doesn't go, and then... Well, that, that I think goes to the point uh, Deputy Mayor uh, Nelson brought up, is that that if if the fire district is intent upon starting, you know, the, the limited work that they've been authorized to do, which is the removal of, of dirt, if, if they're committed to doing that, if, if we say we're not going to accept any dirt until um, the judge, you know, rules on the the you know the case then again if they're intent on starting then they're going to be trucking it away and then that puts them into the situation once that dirt's gone they're in and, and the case goes the other way um, then they're going to be responsible for replacing it well I understand dirt is dirt yep. but topsoil excavating compacting getting ready to do footing is entirely different than topsoil, and I'm no expert on this. I don't pretend to be. Well, I, I think you know to understand you know what what they consider to be the excavation piece, the topsoil is about 4,600 yards of dirt. That's that's what they're talking about. It's not doing anything else other than reducing you know the amount of dirt that's on that that surface, so they can bring in clean fill that will be able to meet their their uh, compaction rates, but they're not going to be bringing that, that fill in until because that starts the clock on the building permit, and that's not what's been authorized. Okay. Well, you have the opinion from one side, and I was trying to get the opinion from other just to make up my mind here. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to prices, Kenny, I understand at another meeting I was in Proofers to go, Somebody said they were going to sell it for $100,000 if we didn't take it. Now, I'm not sure about that, but that's what I heard. Now, I don't think we should do anything till the court comes. And, and, Red, perhaps you can go have a sidebar with Mr. Cross and report back before we're done with the discussion. I have Councilman Arnone, Councilman Crowley, then Councilman Kenser. Ken, you brought up a little point to kind of made a got a question I'd, I'd like to ask uh, you know the judge gave them the stripping or removal of the topsoil and, and that's the question I'd like to know under what conditions if I went before the judge and I said to them well I have an agreement with the town to move the topsoil 500 feet away put it in a big pile where you know it wouldn't be too hard to put back in again and then he rules on those conditions but are those the conditions? Or were the conditions, well, uh, you know, we're going to move topsoil, we're going to put it in a truck, we're going to move it, and we're going to pay to move it. So now we have two different conditions, which is going to be two different uh, 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 answers for us to have to, to uh, make on this. And, and that where I'm uncomfortable, I, I believe with red, too, I think this should be all a hold for a couple of weeks until this, uh, until this uh, sorts itself out in court. 
but that's that's what conditions did they say that they're going to move these tops sold? It was the conditions just put in a big pile in the corner of the lot, and is that a that's stripping stripping and removal, maybe two separate items, and we don't know that without that information, I, I can't make it a, a a decision. Well, thank you. Let me let me and and I understand the political part of the decision. I I, I fully get that, but I, I guess. Trying to understand what what legally we we you know have to worry about and what we don't have to worry about, um, you know what what we have in front of us is somebody is saying we're authorized to give you this dirt. Are you willing to accept it? Now, if if they are doing something contrary to what the judge and you know allowed them to do, again that's that's not on us that's on them to make sure that they're following the orders of the judge and what they presented to me was the judge told them that they can take the dirt off the land you know they can do anything up to something that requires a building permit and so again i understand that there's another level that's that's why you make all those those millions of dollars that you as <laughs> council make right. um to make that that political based decision but but again you know the things that that you know Get, would get us in trouble or you know run us afoul of the law you know those those are Thompsonville fire district issues not not our issues I, I know that doesn't help but I just I just wanted to say that that you know their their issues aren't necessarily our issues yeah the transcript would help if I had a transcript right in front of me then I then I it helped me out a lot but until then, I, I think this has really got to, and, the dust that has to settle. Just to let you know, when, when I did speak with the attorney, I asked if, if they had anything in writing that they could give to me for tonight's meeting to make it easier for me. Um, and, you know, what the attorney said, well, you can get the transcripts. Well, no, thank you. Yeah, you know, it, it is what it I is. I can try to get those, but, yeah. you know, it's not going to do us any good tonight, unfortunately. All set, Tom. That's it. Councilman Crowley. Hi, <laughs> Matt. <laughs> You're still direct, smiling, so that's good. I guess this is directed more towards you. Um, I don't. I don't believe that they're going to wait for us to make a decision whether or not they're going to move the dirt. If we're not ready to accept, it, I think it's going to go and, and be trucked off. I, it's just my opinion. Um, most construction companies they schedule stuff, it happens, and, and they move on to the next site. You know, in due time. Um, as far as the dirt being stored on our property, it's probably the best place for it to be stir stored. Um, and, and I think it's, it's that for a few reasons. Um, one, if, if they get approval to go ahead with the firehouse, um, we, we can accept the dirt to fill the Higgins hole. Um, if not, and I believe it's part of our purchase agreement with that piece of property, if they can't build the firehouse there, the, the land reverts back to the town. And if it comes back to the town, we'll have the dirt to put back in, over into the hole. And it's, it's kind of like a, a fail-safe for us if it's stored in that area. Um, if they truck it out of here, now we got a hole, and we're going to have Higgins School to have a hole. And it's going it's to cost us a lot of money to fill those two holes. With that being said, and, and it's not because I'm, I'm taking sides or anything, but, but with that being said, I think it, it's a smart move for us to store it on our property because they're going to strip it whether or not we take it or not. So I, my opinion is I think it's a good spot for it. And either way, it's either going to go back on a corner lot or it's going to go into Higgins Hole. So I think either way, we'll benefit from it storing there. I don't think it's going to be a detriment to us storing dirt on an empty lot. So that's kind of like where I am as far as the dirt being stored. Okay. That's it. Brett, I've got... Tom and Joey, unless they want to yield to you. Uh, I should probably go first because I may be able to actually okay. answer Red's question. So go ahead. Tell me if that is, and I'll yield to you, and we'll go back. But I have the article from the Journal Inquirer, um, and in it it says, <clears throat> after it talks about what's happening, it says, Peck, the judge, on Friday ruled the soil on the construction site for the new fire station at the corner of Lincoln and North Main Streets could be moved. Soil not topsoil it's it's this is what it says in the uh, this is the news article 
Right. It doesn't say topsoil. It doesn't say topsoil. It says soil. Right. And then Landolino, the lawyer for the Thompsonville Fire Department, said the topsoil would likely be stripped and moved into a pile surrounded by a fence to prevent erosion into the streets. Our interpretation is that uh, she just allowed us to do the essential. It is essentially that process, preparing the land, preparing the land for construction. That that's what the article says. So I'll go back to you. You can go back to me and. Yeah, Joey's next. So oh. are you all set? Yeah, no, I'm not then. Okay. So my, my point is, uh, Pat and uh, Kenny mentioned it. We've already delayed this once. We have to assume as a town that the fire department is following the procedures prescribed by the court. It is the right place for it. Um, I do not want two big holes. I don't want one big hole. I want the dirt to go from one hole, rest, and then go into the other. We have a Higgins demolition coming up. We've been talking about this. When we originally talked about selling the land, this was part of that conversation. That was going to help them out. It was going to help us out. Um, I say we move forward on it tonight. There's no reason to wait on it. And I think waiting on it is more political than anything else. There's just it, the dirt will be moved 100 feet, and it'll be in a pile over here. If it needs to go back, it goes back. If it doesn't need to go back, we put it in our hole. Then everybody's happy. And let me just be clear. There's, there's actually two issues. One is the, the dirt. And the other issue is the license that we'd have to grant so they can do their staging and lay down area. We're not we're not addressing the staging or the lay down area. Correct, areas, just the dirt. Just the dirt, which right. you know, we, we had an understanding that we were gonna be accepting on our property as part of that. So Right. So we you, we were last meeting talking about a larger area of containment for equipment, a license for that, and then a spot for the dirt. Now we're just talking about the dirt. Yeah, and I think we just we never had an opportunity really to, to talk about the two separate issues as all kind of lumped together. Let's wait and see what happens at that point. Because, I mean, you know, the, the, the more you delay it, it's worse for us and it's worse for them. So I say move forward and be done with it. Joey? If Red wants to go, he can go. Red? Well, the information that I'm getting is the judge said they could remove topsoil. He said nothing about taking it off the property or anything else like that. And the other information that I'm getting is that the lawyer, I assume, was Landolini we're talking to, has been fired by Commissioner Rousebaugh. So I don't want to get into this mess, but the more I talk, the more I'm getting into it. Yeah. Well, but so I would question as to whether your information is correct. Well, I think... I mean, addressing whether he was fired or not, I, I think, you know, I would liken, because that's one one of three, it would be like, you know, one member of council saying, we just fired Kevin. Yeah. And, I mean, it, it takes... Wait, wait a minute. It, it <laughs> takes at least that's six, analogy Kevin. you can come up with. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure that you were awake. Two um, but there's only two commissioners right now. There's one, two. Right. There's, there's Mr. Lima here and Mr. Rospa. So that's a question that they got to answer, not me. My problem is that you're talking about holes. There's no hole when you strip topsoil. Am I right, Kenny? It doesn't say topsoil right. It says soil. <laughs> well, <clears throat> my information is you said topsoil. Nothing about moving it off the site. So, hey. I just can't support it. There's too many unknowns here. And I'm afraid that we'll get into some kind of a mess with this. And I don't want to do it. Joey. I guess there may be a lot of unknowns, but there are some knowns. If we have 4,000 yards of material, that's 250 triaxle loads of material to be hauled off the property. At one and also halt onto the property when we open up Higgins. If we do a one hour run from the infield transfer station to Higgins, which is nearly impossible, but we're just going to use one hour for a round number. That's $18,775 worth of trucking to haul the material to fill Higgins Hole in. Now, at our, our bit of our rate of the town, we pay $125 an hour for a loader. 
At 250 hours of the loader, at 125, we'd be talking $31,250 to load the trucks to bring the fill over to Higgins. So, we can sit here and argue what's right and what's wrong and what's not, but the ultimately, if we do not accept this material like we said we were going to accept in the first place, on the low side, because I do not think you're going to do our turnarounds, you're talking close to $50,000 in trucking to bring the material to the site of Higgins School. It'd probably be more like seventy-five dollars to $80,000 just for trucking. That's us using our own material on site at the dump. Now, the next problem is with the Thompsonville uh, Fire District opponents, if that material is moved off of the lot and something happens and the town gets stuck with this lot again, either the town is going to have to pay an additional $50,000 to put material on this property, which it'll probably be more because now we're going to have to cover it with topsoil. Or we can take the material that's on the pile and we just say, we do not use this until it gets Clear. cleared. And as soon as it gets cleared, we set the demolition of Higgins, push the material in the hole, and everything's good. If we wait and they move that material off like they're entitled to do, we, it doesn't matter. We are, we are not part of their lawsuit. We just either can take the material or we can get rid of it. So if we decide to let them move that material off and the property reverts back to the town of Enfield, we're gonna end up paying another $100,000 to fill it and, and regrade it. So the best thing to do is have them put the, prop the material on our property with the condition that we won't use it until the court case is at least goes to the next step and they say, yes, you can do it or no, you can't. Or, or gives, uh, uh, you know, oh, yeah, you can put the footings in or whatever. Then it can always come back. But once it's off the property, it's gone. And once it's off the property, it's going to be in someone else's hole. And the town of Enfield is going to be looking at at least $50,000 in trucking and loading. And that's not putting it in place. So, I mean, I, I'm all for putting it on the, on the, the town's property with the condition that we don't touch it until we know what's going on so it can be put back. And, and it, it's just the best way to do it. I mean, if it's going to go and proceed with or without us, then it's going to proceed. You don't know that. Your Honor, I apologize for exciting Councilman Bosco. <laughs> <laughs> I, but I would like to say this to you, Joey. I can't argue your facts and figures. I'm not in the trucking business, but I have no objection to them taking topsoil and storing it on their own property. They've got a corner there right toward Lincoln Street. They can put it there, and it's still there. My only objection is to go on town property until the court is decided. He's got plenty of room. He's got three big piles over there right now. I'd hate to see the material leave the site, because once it leaves the site, we lose it. And, and, and that's really where I'm coming at. I mean, if, if they're going to proceed no matter what, it's better leaving that material there. Joey, I don't disagree oh. with you. Okay. Just Joey, all set. Just leave it on their site. That's not, that answers the whole question here. Councilman Arnone. I don't understand the urgency to move this soil off a site that that's all they can do with. If they're only right now under a judge's order to move the topsoil, what's the hurry? Move it to the corner of the lot, wait till they get one further phase, which if they win or lose, they get a phase to actually start putting in fit footings. But until then, they can't do anything anyway. What's the urgency? It's like it's it's almost like a threat to me. If you don't move, if you don't let us get our way, you're going to lose topsoil for your Higgins project, and someday you may have to push it back. To me, it's all about what's right or what's wrong. We can argue that all day long, but to me, it's all about what's right or what's wrong, not about how much money the town may be cost in the future on this. That we don't even have, we don't even have an idea what's what's tomorrow's 
court ruling is going to be. They have plenty of room to stack that big old pile in the corner like any construction site normally would do. There's no reason to haul it off site until this is settled. No reason whatsoever because they can't dig as it is now. That's it. Councilman Bosco. Well, I don't know how much room they have on their site, but it looks like it's a pretty tough site. So if they strip the material off, put it on their corner, then have to move it again to the other corner on the town property, and then we move it again. <laughs> Every time you move it, it's expensive. But the, the way I look at it is I can't tell you you can't cut a tree down in your own yard. It is their property. The problem's going to happen is if they do something that's in contempt of court, then they're going to get the silver bracelets. So if they want to take the chance of doing something that is in contempt of court, they can get the bracelets. But right now, it's their property. They paid for it. The court order, if it, claim, if it is correct that they can remove the topsoil and, or any of the soil, they can do that. That's what America is about. The problem is, if there's a court order on there and they're doing something that they're not supposed to do, that's when the man comes with the silver bracelets and takes you away. It's not up to us. So, you know, if there's a court order and they're doing something they're not supposed to, it would be the same as if any of us did something that we're not supposed to do and there's a court order for it, we're going to get it, we're going to be penalized, but it's their property right now. Joey agreed, but that's not the point. The point is moving it to town property before the court is settled. I don't have a problem. Put it on their property. You've got plenty of room. All set, Joey? All set. Councilman Stokes. Uh, I don't know if our can give Microphone, the Greg. I don't know if our attorney can give the answer to this. Uh, is your, your opinion that they can, from what you know, that they can dig the dirt out of there and, and store it? Do you have, can you any guidance on that, or do you don't want to touch that? Uh, and I understand. Uh, I mean, I'm not, I'm not like holding old, you. We, we don't have six votes to let you go, so. so. <laughs> well, like the old saying is, I only know what I read in the papers. All right. Um, you know, the Thompsonville Fire District is responsible for following the judge's orders. And that brings my second question. If we allow them to place the dirt on our property and they are, they are held, they are given for a citation for going against a judge, are we held liable for that at all? No. I mean, I would expect if, if uh, the Concerned Taxpayers uh, Group feels that they have, uh, the Town Civil Fire Dictator has done something in violation of the judge's order, I would expect that uh, they'd have their counsel in there with a contempt citation the next day, and the judge would determine whether they have or have not violated it. Uh, typically, the, one of the elements of a remedy if they find a violation is to, to restore it to where it was supposed to be. Um, but, you know, that's... You know, we don't. We're not a party to that. We're not bound. We don't. There's no judge's orders as against the town of Enfield, um, and um, it's. I hesitate without even being in, in, involved in the case. The court does not. Uh, the court's filing online does not record these as orders of the court. Um, it in the August, I think third or seventh date uh, the court noted that the you know i think i forget the line that the uh, with regard to the original work of uh removing trees and things like that um the, the court had it didn't even issue it as an order it had indicated that that was either agreed upon or discussed in in the chambers the latest order from the court does not reference removing topsoil or anything else from the newspaper reports sounds like to me as an attorney it sounded like there was a discussion or understanding presented to the court or an oral uh, exchange that went on there so uh, whether it's a good or bad good idea or bad idea i don't think the town has any liability one way or the other as to what steps the thompsonville fire district might take under these circumstances if i can continue with my with my cross-examination of our attorney um <laughs> It, the understanding that they're expecting uh, some type of resolution near the middle or end of, Feb or, or of September. And I guess my question is, do we know that they're prepared to take that dirt out if we were to give the go ahead or is it, is it, a, is it a moot point? Are they ready to do it or is it something they can't really get to until after that deadline anyways? And we're talking about something they can't get done to that deadline or our next meeting. 
I, I have no idea what okay. the, their plans are. Okay. Um, Matt, do you know anything? It's it's my impression that they they plan to start removing the the soil. Okay, and then the other question I have, and I think Councilman Hall had mentioned it. You know, the idea of storing the, the soil on our property um, is um, is beneficial. I guess it's not an agreement, but there's an assumption that when Higgins comes down, it's going to be used to fill in the hole at Higgins, which to me is 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 seems to be a good partnership with the Thompsonville uh, Fire District. Um, I don't have a, a, a anything in the game here. No, I know there's a lot of stuff going on. I read a lot of what's going on. Um, I do have kids and grandkids in Thompsonville that get serviced by this fire department. Uh, who did an excellent job when my grandson had an injury last week. They showed up about two minutes, and then he wanted to play in the ambulance and the fire truck for a while. Uh, but the key thing for me is this, and, and, and this is the only logical thing I can think of. There's a lot of here I don't know. It would seem to me that when you take the dirt out, if they have the right to take the dirt out, which we can't get clarity on, that keeping it on the property, our property or their property, makes sense for the Thompsonville Fire District taxpayers and the town of Enfield taxpayers. Because if the court comes back and says you cannot build, then they have the dirt there to put back into the hole. If we, if we, if they're, if they, we don't allow them to place it on our property and they take it off site this week, they're going to have to expend more money and so that's, a, that's going to come out of tax money. If they are given the green light to go and there's an assumed agreement with us to have the dirt for Higgins, it saves the overall infield citizens tax money by having the dirt there. So I guess on a, maybe I'm wrong, but maybe on a fiscal area, the logical thing is it's dirt being stored until somebody makes a decision. And, 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 and just, you dig it up and you set it there, and, and maybe I'm not reading something right now. I don't have, a, I don't have a, a stake in the game here or anything, and I respect all sides as much as I can know about it, because I haven't really paid close attention to it, uh, not being in Thompsonville, but to me, it's dirt that's going to benefit somebody, and if we take it off site, someone's going to pay that. And that's as logical as I can get. So I don't know <laughs> if that makes sense. That's just my statement. So. Both going to pay. Thank you. Councilman Kensler. Yeah, I, I mean, I would equate this to if a group wanted to sue the town of Enfield because it didn't like the high school that we're going to build. And... We were starting construction, and we had a course of action, and, and it was going to take us three years. And next year, somebody came and started suing us, and we were going to be modeling the land, doing things like that. We would not stop and wait for the final decision. This is a no, no, no risk to the town, and if the, if the dirt is sitting right next door, it can go right back in. And uh, I don't get it. I, it's just... To me, it's this is all politics. I really I hate to say it, but that's really what it is. It's politics, and that's kind of sad. Um, people don't want the fire department built. Just say you don't want the fire department built. But the pile of dirt where it sits doesn't really make a lot of sense to truck it away and pay on both sides. Um, it makes sense to move the dirt, put it in our lot, give them the use of that lot, and then if it needs to go back, it goes back, and then that's the end of that story. It'll be the way it would have been anyway. So I'm going to be in favor of moving the dirt, whatever, how many hundred feet it needs to be moved to put it on our property. No, but we have to arrive at a consensus as to whether they can proceed in depositing the dirt on town property. Anyone else? Oh, sorry, Councilman Crowley. <clears throat> Part of the process um, that we went through, and it, it came tonight, and, and I'm not trying to quote, quote you, Mr. Cross, but if you want us to wait until the ruling and you stated that you're going to appeal anyway, how long does that process take, the appeal process? And by that time, the dirt is gone. Because um, I don't think the fire department's going to wait forever. I don't even think we could tell them where to put the dirt, on the corner of their lot or not. They can ship it out. Just get it out of the property. I, I understand the politics of it. What I'm trying to say is I just don't want to lose the dirt. One way or the other, I don't want to have two empty holes and no dirt. Um, but the appeal process can take years. And in Higgins School is going to be sitting there for years again. Um, well, I, I don't understand. Let me, let me clarify that. When, when we do the demolition, 
there won't be a hole when we're done. I mean, it'll be filled. And, and the question is, will that be by material that we have another place? So we have to bid out, you know, as part of that demolition bid, the trucking of the material to get it on site or not. So, so there's not going to, you know, if, if, if we don't have that soil, there won't be a hole there right, when we're done. Right, but a cost, at a cost. Right, exactly. Whereas yeah. if, it's, if the dirt was sitting right there, the cost would be minimal. There'll still be a cost, but it'll be minimal. Yeah. Just be moving. So I don't know what, what we want to wait for. I mean, I don't know what to wait for because it was stated that if they lose, they're going to appeal. And I'm sure if the fire department loses, they're going to appeal. So this process can go on for years as far as an appeal goes. But the dirt can sit in, a, in an empty lot for how long? We don't care. None of, I don't, first of all, I don't think it matters if it sits here for a year or two years. But at least it's there in case one side wins and one side loses. So... I'm good. Thanks. Councilman Lee. Scott? Oh, I'm Please. sorry. No, sorry, yeah, no, Bill. She's right. Councilman Mangini. No, go, I'll Cindy. Cindy, I'll jump, Cindy. I'll jump in. Just, uh, Pat, where you were going. I mean, how long it sits there is pretty important. Um, I think we need to know how long we're going to wait in this process before using the material or not using the material. You know, if this thing, we, we want our own project done. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I don't want to be waiting a day more than we need to to complete it. Um, so I think if, if we're going to reach a consensus on whether to store it or not, we need to come back and have an understanding or a candid conversation as soon as this next phase of the court case is completed to understand, you know, how long we're willing to wait and if it delays our own project. Um, Joey's numbers are pretty compelling, but... Um, we're going to fill the hole. Once Higgins comes down, the dirt goes in the hole. We're going to end up trucking dirt here for Higgins or for that lot. We're going to end up having to pay for one if it doesn't go that way. I agree with you, Bill. So once Higgins comes down, the, the dirt gets pushed, so we're not looking at a pile for three years while so they fight the this So the potential out. cost, if we ever had to re replace um, the soil, I mean, that's the cost down Would the road. Would be the same as Higgins. I got you. Yeah, Councilman Mangini. Thank you. <clears throat> we're not voting on this issue. If we were voting on this issue, I'd vote no. Um, this is a healthy discussion, and um, Mayor Copen indicated that we're just looking to give direction. This whole issue, in my opinion, should never have come to the council. So my position remains the same, that I can't support moving forward at this time on this whole issue. So I would vote no, and I um, would give direction to not move forward at this time. That would be my position. I think, again, logically, you know, maybe we, we've got uh, the legal, you know, grounds to stand on or to put the dirt in or whatever you want to do with the dirt. But the fact of the matter is there are people out there in Thompsonville that essentially were slapped down, in my opinion, the referendum went down twice, and now council is just going to move forward. I can't do it, and I have to publicly state that I, I just don't support any of this. Thank you. Anyone else? So for me, I was um, in full support of not giving the fire district the right to park stage construction equipment and material on town property, because that's a, a use of a town entity for their project. When I made that decision a month ago, it was always in my mind that, that the depositing of the dirt was something different, because that was, although it was on the map, it was understood that we were receiving the soils. Um, and Economically, it makes sense. Um, I don't want to use the soil until the court case is resolved, but I also don't want to leave a pile. So, of course, we have a mess that's dropped at the feet of the council. Um, you know, and, you know, it, I agree with Cindy, it should never have gotten to this point, but it has, and, and we're elected to make these tough decisions. Um, 
I would only accept soil going onto our property is that it is being given to us or, you know, we're receiving it and then it is ours to use as we see fit. Because once Higgins comes down, it, it, we're not waiting. And, you know, to me, if I was a commissioner of Thompsonville, I wouldn't do anything. I, I, I would stop the project. But that's not my decision. There's too many balls up in the air. It'd be like us breaking ground on Enfield High School if we didn't know we had the funding from the state of Connecticut. Um, but again, that's not my decision. That's the elected leaders of the district to make that decision. Um, I mean, so, and if the court case, and to, I don't know how the court case is gonna go, I think Everyone, both sides have a compelling case, and it's going to be up to the the the, uh, the judge to decide. I wouldn't dismiss either side winning. Um, but if the taxpayers group wins and the project stops, and we've filled the hole at Higgins, it's the responsibility of the Thompsonville Fire District to return that piece of property to the way it was before construction began. And I would include that you got to replant trees. That if, if, <laughs> if you went to the extent where you're starting to prep and you knew about a court case, you're taking the risk that you may lose. And you may win. Chances are you win, chances are you may lose. But that property has to be restored to what it was. Um, it can't hold up Higgins. It's got, the hole would have to be filled. Um, but in the meantime, you know, I don't see an issue with it piling, um, secured, um, properly secured with erosion control paid for by the district. Um, just because it's it's go it's if the district wants to continue with a construction project with a big question mark over their heads then they're taking that liability on themselves but as a town we're going to be i would hope we'd be adamant that it's on their dime and their responsibility to restore it to our satisfaction um and i wish it wasn't at our feet because this is not an easy decision um, but it is. So that, that's where I'm coming from. Um, but no give on the construction material, the, the, um, the equipment, the gated property, all of that. That's got to wait until, um, until the court case is fully resolved. And, and if, uh, you know, if it's an appeal one way or the other, you know why why is someone why are they stripping the land anyways if it's if it's going to get held up for months and months and months um so that's my thoughts any additional thoughts councilman edgar yeah i have one question from something that you said do we have a written agreement from the district that they're going to give us that fill that dirt topsoil whatever you want to call it no no i answered that earlier no we don't so what you're seeking from council would be to accept it. How would you accept it officially? D does there have to be an agreement, I think, to Councilman Edgar's question? Typically, this, for them to put the, prop or the uh, soil on town property to, to uh, store it there, we'd enter in a license agreement the same way we did with the district when they were going to use that triangular piece of property where the firehouse is now yep. for, for parking sure. on that, for storage. It's, it's, it's not an easement, it's a temporary license to use the property to store the, the was, material there. They're giving it to us though. They're not well, storing it for their purposes. Right. Yeah. Well, and, and if they're giving to us, then well, we, we'll have to accept it. We. Let, let me clarify. My question sure. was, uh, from what the mayor said, I asked, do we have a written agreement from the district saying they were going to give us that property for Higgins, that dirt? And somebody said no, and somebody said yes, and I heard I don't know. So I don't know the answer. Well, I, I clearly said earlier that we do not have a written agreement. I said that earlier. 
Okay. Okay, but I, it was said. Yeah. Uh, okay, any further? Councilman Hall. I just uh, have a quick question. Um, logistically, and I haven't studied the map, but if we go to take Higgins down and the dirt is still in dispute, does the storage where they have it housed on town property prohibit us from working around taking Higgins down? Does it impact no. yeah, where they're looking to store it in any shape or form of yeah, no. us doing what we need to do? In yeah, order every, to get that's why we down. wanted everything to the back so we it doesn't interfere with our ability to take it down mm -hmm. okay so and, everything and, will be out of the way it won't yep. okay. yeah and, and let me question. let me let me clarify one point here I, I think and I just want to make sure that that uh, Kevin agrees or doesn't agree with this if if we're talking about storing for them that's a different issue other than us accepting it for the Higgins project. Because I think, you know, I agree with what Kevin then said is if, if it's storage for them, you know, that, that would be a license. But, you know, how this was approached was that, that you know, it is a, a, you know, effectively somebody is donating land or dirt to the town of Enfield. And it's for our purposes. So right. if if all of a sudden we're going to be changing that now and saying we're going to be storing it there, then then I would I would agree with what's being said in terms of that's then a part of the licensing, not a part of the Higgins project, which again somebody is donating dirt to us. And and typically when we have donations like that, we don't get agreements from from the party. So. And, right. So I, I think yeah, so they don't tear up the yeah. land to, or anything like that. To just follow up, it goes back to my question is if we're accepting this dirt, who's giving it to us? You're saying the district, Kevin, but right. I don't know who the district is because we have two commissioners. So who makes the decisions for the district is my question. Presumably be a vote of the, the commissioners. Um, you know. There's two commissioners. And they're going to tie, they're going to have to work that out. Uh, I mean, I was wanted, what I was it. talking about the license, if I could, was trying to address the issue that the council, uh, Councilor Nelson had brought up that if they, and uh, Councilor Lee and some, some others, if we're going to take the property, take it on there, hold it until we get a court order, and then if the court says put it back, it's there to put it back, if it's there to dump it in. If the idea is that we're just going to accept the property, we don't need a license for them to use that area. Just, yeah, you could bring it to us and we'll drop it off here. Um, you know, the governance of the district is, um, you know, is an issue for the citizens of Thompsonville Fire District and for the commissioners of the fire district. I mean, whether, you know, whether they're authorized to enter into this agreement, if they, if they represent that they are, that's an issue for the commissioners and for the citizens and the electors of the Thompsonville Fire District on that. Um, you know, that's, you know, that's our side of the deal and that's their side of the deal. We have to make sure that we follow our procedures and our requirements of our charter and they need to make sure that they're doing that. They don't come in and uh, direct this council how to proceed under the charter and how you you conduct your business on that. So. I'm done. All set? Yep. yep. Greg? Uh, my question then on this is getting more and more confusing as the evening's going on, um, but I'm glad we're talking about it and, and, and asking the questions. You have two co commissioners, and, 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 I, and if one commissioner is for turning the dirt over to us as we own the dirt, and one commissioner is not in favor of it, and the vote goes one to one, under the, the rules of voting, that motion does not pass at anybody. Is, is, am I correct there, Councilor? Under, under any normal rules, yeah. I mean, okay. So the question I have is... You can, only because you can have supermajority where you take two-thirds, you can have other rules that may have... Right, and I understand. I understand two-thirds if your bylaws call for... You know, but my understanding is when you have a tie vote, usually it goes... It's, it, it, it fails. Right. A motion fails normally on a tie vote. 
So the question I have then, and I don't can't ask them here, but to me, you would think that the Thompsonville Fire di District would be, I haven't heard word about replacing the third commissioner, and I'm not in their business, you would think they would call for an election quickly as possible and get it voted on so that way the full commission can make a decision. And I'm just wondering if you've heard or in your conversation anything like that happening. Okay. So, because I'm now I'm concerned because now we're talking, and I like action, the mayor, that's why I guess, well, they pay him the bigger money. <laughs> Um, he, he made sense that, you know, we can take it, we can own the dirt, and then that way, because you know, if they're going to move forward in this, you know, they incur the risk. Although, if in the interim, the court says no or so. To me, it's, it, this is really a tough one because you don't want anybody getting screwed here. But I do feel like it's hard on us because I think Councilman Hall is, is making sense to me now because I'd like to know if we did want to have an acceptance agreement, and two people would one, and I'm, I'm guessing one would say no, and one would say yes. It fails. We can't get an agreement. So to me, I, it's almost like I'd encourage them to have an election and get a third commissioner to make it easier on us. So. But again, that's out of our control. I thought, yeah, I just so I, it, let me try to recap that what we're trying to see consensus on is to give the manager direction to accept the soil. When we accept the soil, it's the property of the town of Enfield for the use to fill Higgins. No matter what the court case resolves itself, once they give it and it's deposited in our land, it's ours. It's not going back to them no matter what the court case is. We have a, a hole to fill. So I think it's kind of fallacy for us to say the dirt comes back. Now, whether they have the right to give the dirt, I have no idea. So, and that's, that's what's in the court case. Um, and that's why this decision is hard to make. And it's like, you know, who owns it? Do the commissioners own it? The taxpayers own it? But in the end, they're making a decision to move the dirt. But if we accept that we own it and it's ours. Right. So that's that's my understanding. Just that's the consensus that we're seeking. And my sense is by a nod of heads that there's consensus here to do it, to proceed. You're I, and it's no, by no means is it a majority. Nope, I say no. I'm, I have one question on that. Is that I, I, I'm in agreement if we, we get the dirt, it's ours. But do we need to give our consensus? Uh, considering the fact that they have to prove authorization to be able to give the dirt away? Because I don't want them to come back legally and say they can't give it to us. Well, then we just don't get the dirt. Right. We just don't get the dirt. I mean, it's that simple. The, the commission <laughs> voted for a fire department, three members. Nobody has voted to stop anything. The judge heard the attorney who supposedly is fired. Well, if he's fired, why did the judge hear him? See, these are all things they need to worry about. But as the three commissioners sat down, they voted for a fire department. There has been no other vote to cancel this fire department. And if the judge heard the lawyer that's supposedly fired, well, obviously he's not fired then. So the judge isn't listening to this. You know, that's their whole thing. If they don't want to give us the dirt, then it don't end up on our property. Right now, we're paying... Fifty to seventy-five thousand dollars to fill a hole, whether it's Higgins or it's their hole, because they lose. We're paying that same dollar amount, but why would we pay twice that if we let the dirt leave the site? So I, I understand what you're saying, Greg, and I agree with you. And if they fight it out and they lose and the dirt don't come, then it don't come. Scott, Pat, and then Tom. <clears throat> Last week sewage, this week dirt. I mean. <laughs> <clears throat> We're moving up. It's a dirty business. Um, the dirt's going one way or the other. So it's either it goes away or it goes onto our site. That, to me, that's the way it's going to be. I don't, think, I don't think they have a cease to stop moving the dirt. They're going to move the dirt one way or the other, according to what Matt told us they're about to begin next week. So, so I think it's just make a decision, yes or no, and let's move on. Yeah. It's that simple. Let's move Tom. Dirt. And my understanding is that when the three commissioners came to us, that they came to us with three commissioners. Three commissioners came to us and said, 
we want to build this fire department. Here's our plan. This is the piece of land that made the agreement, and we will give you the dirt to help you with Higgins. It factored into our decision on the price to sell them the land. It was in discussion with this full council for months, and we hashed over that. So to Kenny's point, no one has disavowed that vote. That, that was three commissioners. So to answer your question, Greg, the full commission voted on this. We have just been delaying and acting upon it, and um, we should take the dirt. Oh, uh, the other question I have was, when is right now the anticipated groundbreaking for Higgins? The demo? Uh, we're looking at the end of September for the uh, – remediation part so it'll be mid-october okay they so four or five weeks from now the building comes down if nothing uh, else it'll probably be in mid mid-october when they get done with four, the five weeks yeah. so maybe six so six. we need that pile of dirt over there no a reasonable period of time yeah. okay thank you councilman hall just one, one last note. It's obviously you've got a majority to move the dirt onto town property, which I have to agree with uh, Cindy and Red and, and Tom that I, I, I don't understand the logic of doing that when there's room there to house the dirt. So I, I'm not with you on this one. But I, it, that being said, I'd like to see something in writing. If, if we're going to accept this dirt, I want to see something in writing saying they're giving the town the dirt and they have the authorization to do it. Well, that's one council. Okay. Any further comments? So my read of the council is that there is consensus to accept the dirt. We are accepting the soil as town property. It is, uh, and it is being deposited on town property. And that's my understanding of the consensus. It's not majority, but a consensus. Agreed? No. No, I don't agree. I, I know you don't agree, but do you agree that there's a consensus no. here? No. I agree that you have a majority <laughs> consensus. Uh, correct. Do. Correct. I correct. do not agree with yeah. moving forward at okay. all. Okay. All right. Understood? Next on the agenda. Okay. Motion to table. <laughs> <laughs> no, it stays on the table. It's, it's there. I'll we go to items for item. discussion. <laughs> um, items for discussion, consent agenda, there is none. Appointments, town council appointed. Uh, those two links are for resignation letters from clean energy and ethics. Um, Item D has been moved to miscellaneous, so item E, discussion charter revision process. Do we have motion? At the uh, last meeting, uh, council had requested we put this uh, item on for a discussion. Uh, what uh, we presented within the packets is something that uh, Kevin put together for us that kind of goes over the, the different actions that council needs to take and the time frames for the actions to create a charter commission and then follows through the process. I don't know if you want me to go through each one of these or I, I know you've had an opportunity to review them. Um, you can what's, use that as kind of a starting spot. What's the pleasure of the council? Do you want to go through this tonight? You want to revisit it at the next meeting? Yeah. Well, Would I'd like to the town to make a presentation Right, let the town make a presentation next meeting with the town attorney, yeah. the pros and cons, let the people hear it, they've been asking, and then at that point we can make a decision to go forward or not. Well, that's, um, that's reasonable. All right, Bill? Everything I say is reasonable. No, it's not. I, I guess I'll hold the question. I mean, the big okay. question I have is whether or not, you know, the actions of this council, how the actions of this council, maybe we can take as a Pending takeaway question, um, Kevin, how does the actions of this council affect the new one as it would relate to a decision on a, on a charter process? <coughs> I suspect that's probably a big part of the discussion. Okay. Tom? Uh, yeah, and I think it's really important that w for that presentation we we, we really ask the public to 
you know, for for uh, com uh, public communication next meeting to, to as many people to be here that are concerned about that and that want to have, uh, you know, possibly consideration input, that kind of thing, to, to, and those of you at home that can't be here to watch it um, so they can understand all the intricacies of what that will involve and how, how, it, how it needs to go in terms of process. So I, I like the idea of next meeting as opposed to trying to yank it through at 1015 tonight. Thank you. Councilman Arnone. Yeah, I'll just set it out there. Why on earth would we tackle charter revision with two months left to our terms? It makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. You're tackling something we just got, we were just told uh, repeatedly by people with, with armed guards that the system was rushed. Have we not learned anything? Thank you. Councilman Kensler. Yeah, I appreciate your passion. Um, no one said anything, I didn't hear anything about rushing anything. I heard about starting to get into the process. And if the process takes six months to do it right, or it takes six weeks to do it right, whatever it takes to do it right is fine, but it's all about the people creating a committee, going in and seeing what, if anything, needs to be done. They may come back and have very few recommendations. They may come back with some major changes, but it doesn't affect our workload. Uh, it doesn't matter, I don't think, what the next council, whoever's sitting here, because at any time, somebody can do what we're doing right now. So that doesn't matter. What matters is going back every 10 or whatever years and revisiting and doing the right thing for the people. So it's not going to add anything. I heard the phrase, well, we have a lot on our plate. Well, I don't think we have any more on our plate than we normally do. And this is a big thing. And we've never shied away from taking on whatever needs to be taken on. So, I, and if it goes anywhere, it, it's meant to go there. If it doesn't go anywhere, it, it wasn't meant to. But that's, I don't think the argument of why in the world would we do this now, you could say that anytime. Councilman Arnone. I have no problem with charter revision. Most charters have it in there that every 10 years that they'll review it. What I have a problem, we don't, maybe that's something that needs to be in there. But what I have a problem with is us, council with two months left to our terms, deciding who this committee is with a new council or not, maybe coming in. That should be their job, the new council's job, whether I be here or not, should be their decision. They have two years to run through it at that point. So if it takes six months, they, got, they could make eight months if they wanted to. It should be done, and it should be done correctly, and it should not be done by a council that has only two months left to their term. Thank you. Further discussion? Deputy Mayor Nelson. Just uh, t to go along with that, that's no different than making the people pay a sewer fee in January once this council's gone. You know, it kind of gets everybody through the election, then the sore fee comes out in January. That's something that people don't want. The charter revision is something that people have asked for. So it's not a two-month process, and we don't even have to pick the committee in two months. But at some point, something has to get started, like the high school. That's been going on for how many years? And I have a feeling the charter is going to go on for quite some time before we iron out all the kinks. So it, it's, it's a long process. That's all it is. Councilman Bosco. Tom, I mean, this is something I said six years ago when I got elected the first time. It has to start sometime. I, I mean, if we just even start laying the groundwork out, getting the communication open, so when a new council comes in, it it'll uh, already have that legwork done. Like, like Ken says, I, I wouldn't say we're going to vote on anything or even set a committee, committee up, but at least start getting the rules. This way they'll know anyone that's going to run next year, I would hope, will be uh, watching what we're doing so they can get up to speed and have, a, have an idea at least where we're going. I mean, it would be the only responsible thing. I know, and you probably did the same thing when I first went on to council, I kept very close to what they were doing, so the day that I jumped in, I would at least have a basic idea of what was going on, at least the stuff that you could say in front of the public. And most of this charter revision stuff is going to be all open session, so 
whoever is going to run against you, me, Red, Scott, or whatever, should be sitting here like Donna is right now, seeing what's going on so when the time comes, if she gets elected, she will be up to full speed or at least three-quarter of the speed to know what's going on. So, I mean, I would hope that anyone that's coming in to, to, to be elected would be really attending these meetings because it's the only responsible thing to do. So when the time comes, tag your it, you'll at least have an idea what's going on. This is just starting the, the clock in motion and getting the basics done. And uh, that'll at least get us going. If not, it'll be another six years we'll be talking about it. Any, Tom? Sewer user fee been in the works four years. Am I right? At least. You've been here, you said six years you've had majority. Why didn't you bring it up six years ago? You guys, could, I've, I haven't seen this on the agenda in the two years I've been here. Why wasn't it brought up? If you guys are so passionate about bringing charter revision, why didn't you do it a long time ago? There's three of us that are passionate. And, and you know, if you can't pull a vote, it doesn't even matter. I can speak in caucus all I want, all day long. If you can't get the support of caucus and you can't get the support of the other side, now we have the support. How'd you do that? If you only got three people and it's on the agenda, how did you it's do it? It's here now. So it's on the I, I find it hard to believe right, that this right. is not motivated. Wow. Councilman Mangini. Thank you. I um, do have to agree with Councilman Arnone. Given the fact that we've only got a couple months before the new council steps in, and we all know that each council has prerogatory to make changes and make policy, etc., looking at the charter is obviously a good thing to do. It's a healthy thing to do, but for the right reason. And I certainly am not uh, interested, and in, nor will I vote for a committee prior to the next election, because that's not the right reason. I don't have a problem reviewing the materials that. Um, town staff has provided us. I think that's great. We need to understand how the charter um, is prepared and, and what the ground rules are. That is true. But uh, no way would I uh, agree to making any um, committee or voting on any um, part of it at this point because that, that would be wrong for the next council. That simply would be wrong. So I wouldn't do that. Thank you. Anyone else? Further? Deputy Mayor Nelson. Very simple. Just vote no. You're right. That's all you got to do is vote no. Absolutely. The people will see. I agree. And that's it. Yeah, because that's what you want me to do. Scott. Councilman Kensler. I think it's safe to say, you know, that recent events have made this come to the surface. You know, the, the armed guards thing is, is there's, there's a lot of talk out of There's some opposition to it. It needs to maybe be revisited, that kind of thing. The taxes, other issues in the town, the sewers. People are asking for more of a say. And creating a charter commission to look at the way we do things might end up, like I said, looking the way it does today, but it might end up looking different. And it's not going to cause any disruption in government. It's not going to cause any problems. Uh, but I think it needs to be done, and I think a lot of people agree with that. Councilman Mangini. I, I just want to clarify something. <clears throat> you know, I've been up here, what, 16 years? Scott, you got two years on me. I, I don't sit here to vote no. I do not do that. When I vote no, I have to have a very good reason to vote no. Because for the most part, what we try to do on this council is to make policy and to make the right decisions. And I like to believe that for the most part, we're moving in a positive direction, number one. Number two, for people to see, absolutely, that's why we have the TV, that's why we have the newspapers, that's why we have the blogs and the patches and all this other stuff that we have, Facebook, <clears throat> social medias. It's extremely important for people to see. That's absolutely correct. But what we also want is for people to understand the facts, for people to get the education provided by town staff. Thank you, town staff, for doing such a good job at it, for people to see. Uh, there, there are things in that charter that most definitely have to be reviewed, and I think Carol will agree with me. I don't think she appreciates being called or referred to as a councilman just as much as I don't appreciate it. Correct? 
because we are referred to as council men in the charter. That's just one item that I can refer to. And there are, there are many others that need to be looked at. But again, people to see, absolutely, this um, government should be um, very transparent for people. It is a government for the people and by the people. So yes, people should see. But to sit here and vote no, that's not the answer. The, the answer is to try and find ways to uh, make uh, the issues a little more um, palatable so that we can make progress and that we do make good policy. So I, I don't sit here to vote no. Thank you. Councilman Lee. Councilman Stokes. I uh, wasn't going to get into this, and I'm quickly. Uh, quickly, um, I have agreed. We have talked in, in our in our caucus for a long time about uh, charter committee, and we've all been in favor of it. So I'll put that on the record. This isn't new, um, and I do believe that it's time to have the charter looked at. Um, but I, I do agree that. Um, to a process that begins that you cannot complete isn't always prudent to do. So that being said, is that if we want to go forth to do the homework, uh, to put a playbook together that's exactly for the, the next council, that's fine. But I think that we should refrain from establishing anything, appointing anybody, or making any firm decisions. We simply should create a playbook. I will also say this is I would hope, and I mean this sincerely, that the next two months that we would avoid as much as possible using this dais and this honorable place that we do business together as platform for campaigns. Because personally, I think that we need to do the work together and leave the politics and the campaigning outside these doors. Okay. Um, I just want to make a couple of points, um, and I uh, thank you for the document. I've never seen it as concise as, as you delivered in 16 yes. point, 19 points, which is a great starting point. Um, the first point is probably the most important point on this document, that even to get off the dime, it requires a two-thirds majority of the council to agree to initiating charter revision, which means eight council members have to vote in favor to do it. So it requires, it should require a unified council to begin the process. Um, um, and once that action's taken, within 30 days, you have to appoint the commission specify when they have to be completed by um, and no more than 16 days uh, 16 months or 16 days 16 months from appointment and then um, and then the council would have to make recommendations to consider and that's within 30 days so there is a very tight time frame for a council to start this process um, you know, and I, I've said this numerous times. I think the time is now for this. Joey, I'll only disagree with you on one comment. At no point in time has charter revision ever come to the agenda. And you right. and you had the right to do that from day one. So I will agree with you, Scott, you and I never put it up, and it's my right. fault. But I, and, but I have been discuss saying that for six years. And we all have. And it's, you know, and it's, 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 it's got to be at the point in time where everyone's ready to be serious about it and commit the time for it, because it's a huge undertaking. It's a healthy undertaking. Um, but, you know, you got to have a pretty unified council to say, I want to start this process. And there's that very quick window. You, you, you need to have conversations before you even get to point one in, in naming and in starting the group, because you've got to get your thoughts of, what do you want to recommend to a charter revision commission? You know, do you want to change council man to, to council person? Do you want to stagger terms? Do you want to make the Board of Ed non-political elected officials? Term do you, limits. Do you want to do term limits? Do you want to make a four-year term versus a two-year term? All, do you want to vote on your budget? All of these things the council needs to flesh out first 
to then make recommendations to the group if you want to make recommendations. They could say, oh, great recommendation, sorry. We're not going to, we're going to just go off of our own page and, and what we want to do through our public hearings. So this is a great document to start. Kevin and, and Matt, you put it together. It's eye-opening. I would ask you to post this on the website. Yeah. Saying if you're interested in charter revision, let, the, let folks know. Um, and maybe at some point in time, it becomes an ETV special. You know, that, you know, I still remember when I was young, there was that cartoon on TV, I'm only a bill and I'm sitting here on Capitol Hill. And it, it moved you through the process. Well, I'm charter revision and I'm sitting here in council chambers and I got a long way to go before I get there. Um, but to the credit of those that asked for it, this document's a great starting point and a great education. But again, point number one, so important. Two thirds of the entire membership, which is eight, has to vote for it. Um, and so you want to kick it off in the right mood and in the right time frame. But it doesn't prevent you from putting your ducks in a row. And hey, maybe this council makes some recommendations for a future charter revision commission because there'll be some changes. There always are. There always is a couple changes. So, all right. Anyone else? Good. <laughs> uh, that completes items for discussion. So we move to miscellaneous. We have one item under miscellaneous. Discussion resolution, request for transfer of funds, and my texting is busy today. Um, request a transfer of funds for State of Connecticut Department of Mental Health and Addiction Services, 29411. And the resolution is resolved that in accordance with Chapter 6, Section 8F of the Town Charter, the following transfers hereby made to Youth Services, DEMAS, PFS Grant, Other Professional Services, $12,000, Material and Supplies, 17411 from Youth Services Revenue, DEMAS Grant, 29411 Certified the funds are available. Lynn Nenny, Director of Finance. So moved. By Deputy Mayor Nelson, seconded by Councilman Mangini. Any discussion? Any discussion? Sensing none, roll call, please. Councilman Crawley. Four. Councilman Edgar. Four. Councilman Paul. Four. Mayor Copeland. Four. Councilman Kinsler. Four. Councilman Lee. Four. Councilman Four. Four. Deputy Mayor Nelson. Four. Councilman Stokes. Four. Councilman Arnone. Four. Councilman Bosco. Four. There's 11 in favor, not against, and no abstentions. That completes miscellaneous. Next item on the agenda is public communications. Is there anyone in the audience wishing to address the council? Mr. Cross. Same rules as the first one, five minutes, name, address, refrain from personalities. I'll time you. I bet you will. <laughs> <laughs> it's late and I know everybody wants to go home. I just wanted to read uh, Jeff Cross, 1116 Enfield Street. Just wanted to review just a couple items in regards to the discussion about the allowing the moving the dirt. Deputy Mayor Nelson indicated something that is an attitude that many people here and many residents here in Enfield have, that a taxpayer is a taxpayer is a taxpayer. You could not be more wrong the taxpayers in Enfield, the taxpayers of the Thompsonville Fire District pay two to three times more taxes than other taxpayers in this town. And our tax rate is at 6.45 right now. Other fire districts have a two mil rate. Others have a three mil rate. So, the taxpayers of the Thompsonville Fire District are getting, are upset with the rates they are paying. Two, the other item that was brought up, that the value of the fill and clean fill can range up to $125 a square yard and maybe as low as $10 a square yard. Now, I don't think you want to pay or get $10 fill. 
because it would not be clean fill. But be that as it may, if we're talking 4,600 4, cubic yards at $10 a cubic yard, we're still talking $46,000. The Thompsonville Fire District paid top dollar for that corner property and paid the town of Enfield $160,000. And now we're donating another $46,000 to the town of Enfield? The taxpayer, the, the town council of Enfield is complicit in increasing the tax burden on the taxpayers of the fire district. That's how the concerned taxpayers of the Thompsonville Fire District feel. And I just wanted to make that point, those two points. You know, will this firehouse go forward? I don't know, but I will tell you that regardless when the appeal takes place, this is an expedited appeal. There is no appeals court, and it's not going to go on for years. It will be resolved in weeks, if not months, because that's the nature of an expedited, because it's going directly to the Connecticut Supreme Court. So, thank you for your time. I appreciate you listening to me, and thank you for. And I want to say one last thing: how disappointed I am that, call it what you will, a consensus or agreement was made by this town council to allow that dirt to be moved. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cross. Public communications, Mr. Tikas. Bob T. Katz, Enfield Terrace. Uh, there's one reason why the mill rate is probably the highest for the Thompsonville Fire District. It's a full-time, 24-7 fire department with 12 full-time employees to protect the town of Thompsonville. The other reason why the, the mill rate's high, the values of the property in Thompsonville are not the highest. Enfield District is the highest. They... I think they have eight full-time. The other fire departments have four full-time. Naturally, their mill rate's going to be lower. I went to the Hazardville annual meeting. The question was asked, how much money is in reserve? It wasn't on the budget. Well, apparently, they have $1.2 million in reserve that they didn't even tell the public. The question had to be asked. Their total budget is $1.2 million. I understand other fire districts have as much or more than their total budget. Those fire districts are overtaxing the districts. They probably should be half of the mill rate of what they're charging the, the uh, taxpayers. Uh, there's never been a forensic audit by any of the other fire districts. An audit and a forensic audit are two different things. So they have done audits. One fire commissioner from North Thompsonville got very upset when I wanted to see a forensic audit of the North Thompsonville Fire District. We have to get these fire districts in line and have a, a streamlined uh, standard budget process for all the, all the fire departments. They go their own way. So the public doesn't understand why the mill rate it is, why different fire districts operate differently, and that's why there's a difference in the mill rate. And I wish somebody would bring all this out and say in a newspaper article some reporter reported by coming up here and giving false information or why there should be certain things there's never been a restraining order on the thompsonville fire district i read that to you that was a scheduling order it wasn't a restraining order and and i think some of the people some of the council people should really say the truth what what's really correct We've had spent more money in the last five years than we have in the previous 10 years in this town. We keep spending more money, taking money out of reserves. We're not really seeing the true picture on the total town budget. 
So I think it's about time we had a little more truth coming out of, out of this town. Thank you. Public communications, anyone else? Sensing none, councilman communications, any councilman communications? Just Deputy Mayor Nelson. I, I wanna say one thing and I think we can all agree on this, that every one of our firefighters do a phenomenal job in this town. And, and I don't think anybody disputes that. You know, and, and it's it's just, it's about money. Money gets people upset. I mean, the right to vote on a budget, but that's not our decision to agree or disagree with you. And I hope you understand, we gotta stay neutral on it. Me, I went to my fire budget meeting and I voted on it, along with Councilman Hall, Councilman Copen was there in Hazardville, okay? So I understand your passion to vote on your budget, absolutely. But everything else, has nothing to do with us up here. So you've got to respect that. Thank you. Any further councilman communications? Councilman Lee. Real quick, I uh, failed to mention it earlier. This coming Thursday night, every um, Cub Scout pack and Boy Scout troop in Enfield is taking part of the National uh, Scout Joining Night. Um, there is a national website where you can put in your address, find the different packs and troops in your area. It's beascout.org. And I believe a flyer is making its way through, very nice, um, making its way through uh, Enfield Public Schools, and that'll detail all the different scouting organizations available to kids of Enfield. Thank you. For the parents, since all the kids Motion are. To Anyone else? Motion to adjourn by Councilman Mangini, Second. seconded by Deputy Mayor Nelson. All those in favor, those opposed, we are adjourned. Have a good Thank evening. God this was a